Hello, hello, by Mr. The Conversation. Um, I'm your host, Single Malt, and today we have a fabulous guest. I, for one, am nervous and equally excited to have him on. Uh, today we will ask him everything. Nothing is off the table. And our guest is very well known for giving back what he takes, so we can expect some questions back from him if he thinks <laughs> of anything. <laughs> yeah, so welcome to the chat, Babis. Thank you so much for having me. I was <laughs> was really crazy to to know that you just reached out for an interview like this. I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm excited too. I've been looking forward to it. That that's the number one feedback I've been getting from anyone that I've tried to invite to the podcast is that it's so outlandish for the Dolphus world that everybody's like, what, what, what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I hope everyone that has made it so far into the podcast has had a good experience and they've kept good memories from it, and we've got good reception from people who've watched it during and after. So I think I'm gonna keep going with it now unless something majorly changes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for the sub, Eslix. <laughs> a little ni- nice, fancy interruption. Um, I like to start every conversation with sort of three anecdotes. And Switzerland, is that where you come from? Can you confirm that for us? Yes. I mean, Fair I'm way. also German, but I, uh, I did grow up in Switzerland. Do you, th- do you feel more Swiss? If, if somebody asks you where you're from, what's your initial reaction? You know, uh, I heard that a lot before, and it's the same for me. When a German person is with me, I feel more like a Swiss person. And when I'm with Swiss people, sometimes I feel more like a German person. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a little quirk about Central Europe that not many people know about. So thank you for telling us about yeah. <laughs> We do have a, um, a... One of my best friends in the game is Swiss, and he's in the chat with us today. And he was also looking for... Oh. Oops, sorry. We've got the dog that is invading. It is single malt and chess after all the name of the podcast. <laughs> um, oh, that's so cute. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, we do have a hydrate. Thank you very much for the hydrate. Uh, that is that is that telling me that people don't want to hear my anecdotes? <laughs> <laughs> I like the goat. It's a mm. good goat. <laughs> all goats are good goats. Anyway, I've tried to peer into the depths of my mind. I scratched the back of my head vigorously trying to find stories with Switzerland that with Switzerland that would be fun and entertaining for people to hear. But I just couldn't find the quantity that I wanted and I'm going to sum them up in two stories and they will pack a punch. So the first one is, um, my background is in economics, so when I was at univers- uh, university I studied money, how finance works, how bank works. And one of the countries that really caught my attention was Switzerland. And it's no surprise to anyone that they're super good with money, super good with gold, and they essentially rhyme with banking and secrecy and stuff like that. So when I looked it up, the more I researched this country, the more amazed I was at it. How can a small country in the middle of Europe be so wealthy, so well designed, brilliant people come out of it? and it holds its weight in the middle of the global landscape. So that was just the first anecdote. The second one is, I hope single mom wife is not hearing this, but the first time I was in the UK here in about 20, 2016, <laughs> and I, I, I'm usually shy in real life. Uh, you might not believe this watching the stream, but I am shy in real life. I'm a bit reserved. Oh, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glad you can relate to that. And. I was coming back from university one day, carrying my books, my turtleneck all the way up because I'm not used to the cold of England, and I, I was just coming back from a philosophy class, and then in the bus there's this young lady that was just staring at me, and I thought, huh, this is weird, this never happens, do I have something, do I have tomato ketchup on my shirt or something, <laughs> why is she looking at me? <laughs> And then the more I looked at her and took my eyes off, the closer she got. So every time I look at her, it's like one of those movie scenes where the cat is getting closer. (laughs) And then she just was straightforward and she had a conversation, asked about my number and I thought, huh, this is new. When I asked her where she was from, it was Switzerland. So I had to look very, very hard for stories about Switzerland and I hope you, this interaction that we have now, will be added to the wealth of stories that I'll be able to tell about the country in the future. 
And awesome. without further ado, I'd like you, Bamis, to take a moment and introduce yourself in as much detail as you fancy. Who is Bamis in real life? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Bamis, uh, or, or Paul. I mean, I go by Paul almost everywhere, except, you know, with people basically only through YouTube. I mean, I'm called Bamis everywhere, but usually I just go by Paul otherwise. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I'm a I'm a programmer. Uh, I uh, have been since I was like starting the apprenticeship at 14. Grew up in Switzerland and still live there now. Uh, really like video games. Yep. And I really like YouTube. That goes together pretty good. Nice. <laughs> um, damn. When you when you ask me to introduce myself, I noticed that I had I have no idea what to say about myself it is a difficult but, um, one but you just tell us whatever you think of i've got some questions down the line so we can structure it and give you more uh, of a frame yeah. so you can answer better but yeah thank you very much for that paul programmer you're good with tech you bloody love youtube and you're not shy about telling us about this in every one of your videos i've heard <laughs> <laughs> nice um well let's start with something that everybody is very much curious about how did you come up with your name, Bamis? Oh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had a long period of time that uh, that I had no idea what to call myself in games. So it, every game on like Overwatch and everything, I always had like completely different names. Uh, the first the first gamer tag uh, I probably had was in Minecraft, mm -hmm. in like when I was like ten. <laughs> and I called myself Super Pauli, which is just basically like <laughs> a very cringe way to, to go about my real life name. Hey, you um, were 10. <laughs> yeah. So the common so the way I came up with my name is is a combination of League of Legends, a game that is near and dear to me, and yep. Dofus is actually. Um oh. so I was as people do in Dofus, creating like new characters, a new team. Mm -hmm. Um and I wanted to have a naming theme, you know, something that starts with one part of the name and then the second part of the name is different for every character. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to make an IOP back in the day and I wanted him to be intelligent. And so I was like, okay, uh, what do I call this IOP? It's going to be intelligent, so fire. Do I have any ideas of fire? <laughs> and so there's, there's an item in League of Legends. Uh, are you familiar with the game at all? No, nope, no, nope, but I'm okay. definitely curious about your experience with it because it seems to be integral to your gaming uh, journey. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, and there was an item back then. It still exists in the game today, and it's called Bamis Cinder. Ooh, so okay, uh, it's this little flame item, mm -hmm. um, and I, for some reason, thought that was cool. I don't remember why exactly, but I <laughs> decided that I would call my IOP Bamis Cinder. Mm -hmm. um, and so, because that's like Bamis Cinder, I I kept Bamis for all characters, and added different things at the end. Uh, for example, my craw was called Bamis Arrow and stuff like that. Yeah. And then for some reason, Bamis just stuck with me, and I called myself that everywhere. Nice. And so I I couldn't help but notice that when you've created the new channel, uh, you've literally just flipped it over. <laughs> how did that? How did you think through that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was very random. Um, I don't know if it's also because I do like improv and stuff, uh, improv improvisation theater. That is uh, yeah. not comedy. Um, uh, so I get very random spurts of of ideas sometimes, and I'm sometimes quite impulsive about them too. Mm -hmm. And so Defy was having this contest about doing the Bolgard Spirit Turquoise Dofus fight as fast as possible. And you had like this whole leaderboard <laughs> who's the fastest and stuff. And I'm competitive, so I wanted to be at the top. I, I didn't make it to the top, but um, so I had this this gameplay of me doing the Bulgard Spirit fight, and I was like, okay, I want to make a stupid meme out of this. Um, yeah. And and I I was like, okay, I, but I want to upload this somewhere. But it's stupid to put it on on my normal channel. I just want somewhere to put it where it doesn't really matter and uh, so <laughs> i took like five minutes i created a new channel for my same google account i called it simap i made a profile pic of, of a reverse b 
And I think I have a banner too, but I don't even remember what it is. It is. It's literally CMAP. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. And that's Did you just... do it in paint or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, in Photoshop, I think. But it could. It might as well have been paint, yeah. I love the... Oh, yeah, that tells me. Oh, obviously. <laughs> that, one, that wasn't high-grade production, but it is hilarious. I did notice while going through your content that you're one of the most creative people I've ever encountered. The content just really? reeks of creativity. Honestly, I'm serious about this. I'm not building you up. Yet... One, I'm, I'm hearing you talk about your previous usernames in some of your previous videos. One in particular that lasted four hours where you had to exhaust every idea that you had in your mind to stretch the four hour. <laughs> and you said that your first username in League of Legends was League of Legends is better. And I'm starting to think, is calling yourself and your characters a limit to your creativity? Does it not extend there? <laughs> that is a good question. I noticed... I mean, I, I would call myself very creative, but for some reason, I'm really bad at coming up with names. Thank God I don't have children yet. I probably wouldn't be able to come <laughs> up with a name. Um, but uh, I noticed the same thing. I, I like playing Pokemon a lot, mm -hmm. and I like giving my Pokemon nicknames. But I just sometimes sit there after I catch a Pokemon, and I just can't come up with a name for the life of me. So wow. all my past usernames, honestly, um, I feel like have been really bad. Yeah, League is better. Wait, <laughs> I don't even remember that. <laughs> Did you watch the entire four hour video? I have consumed every piece of content you have out there. I'm going to oh tell you an God. anecdote about it. This is going to be my third anecdote. Let's go. I found okay. it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this is the anecdote about how the voice inside my head became Bamis. How did it start? <laughs> I receive a notification from one of the grumpiest people I know who's very critical of everyone that puts content out there, including mine, and that's that's the basis of our friendship. Every time I post a video, they'll send me a page of feedback <laughs> about why I've done it wrong. <laughs> that is and awesome. this grumpy guy sends me the link to one of your videos saying this is the best content creator in English. And I took that personally, I was like, why is he telling me this? Is he trying to send a message or something? <laughs> I hey, so, on it. Just so you know, it's not you. It's this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's very on brand for him to do things like that. But this time I was oh like, I'm working really hard. I've lowered the hours down. I'm, I'm really putting the effort here. Come on. But I clicked the video and I couldn't help but agree. <laughs> I couldn't help but agree. Oh my God. So what I've done is I immediately finished your video and posted the comment. How can I get in touch? And that's how we got in touch that's via crazy. Discord and stuff. <laughs> but what happens is that because you weren't available immediately as soon as possible, you had um, commitments with work and everything, we've decided to do it on this day, which means we had three weeks between the time we've talked and confirmed yeah. and today. What that gave me is an opportunity to go through your entire bank of videos out there. So every time I take Chess, the dog that's right here, every time I take her for a walk about two hours a day, I'll put my headphones and I play one of your videos and just listen to it. To the point That's where crazy. now when I go walking, I immediately look for my headset so I can listen to your videos. Oh, really? <laughs> and then the voice inside my head by looking at your videos that long just beca became you. <laughs> That's my third Oh anecdote. my god. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you're done with the catalog so you, you know, you can return to normal there. <laughs> yeah, also, well, go on. I, I just want to put a quick side comment here about yeah. when I said I'm, I'm glad I don't have children. Uh, in chat is actually my girlfriend who oh, just said hello. yeah thank god you don't have children um <laughs> i just want to point that number out number one quick. and number two or oh, he will need your help he will need your help bow off with that <laughs> <Yeah>. maybe <laughs> maybe you can veto oh, that God. decision leave him out of it but yeah, yeah so, i i got that a lot by the way uh yeah. with the videos and just listening to it I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a thing with Dofus videos a lot anyway. Like, a lot of Dofus players just have, like having background noise as they play the game and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I guess <laughs> I guess when I make, like, a four-hour video, that is almost like a podcast in itself. And I got a lot of comments on, on that, usually. That's, like, uh, people just actually listening to all of it while doing something else. Because I used to put these things in the video that's, like, w if you're still watching up until now, comment this. And then there's just people <laughs> who comment all of those things. And it's, it's just absolutely crazy. 
I mean, I, I've got to say something to the chat right now. I did have a structure of how the conversation was going to go, but I was so ready for it to go off the rails immediately. I've already forgotten what we were talking about. <laughs> this yeah, is gonna I be talk awesome. a lot. I love it. No, 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 no. Don't <laughs> worry if I say it's a compliment. I'm loving this. <laughs> you have added some much needed chaos to my life. I love it. Yeah, so that's how um, every uh, time I go out with chess, I'm listening to your content. And that's why every now and then, I will throw peculiar questions to you. Things like, I've heard you say this and this bit, and you might be surprised, I like the League of Legends naming. <laughs> oh my god, because you just remember my own videos better than I do at this point. Only because I've watched them recently, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah, so I think we've covered that bit where naming things for you might be a bit tricky. So you sort of revert to the easiest one. And so when you've created the new channel just to post that video, you just flipped it over. Is that is that right? How long did it take you to come up with that? Yeah, um, I, I don't know if I've I had that idea before at some point, but just didn't do it. But I, I know I did have on my mind already to make like Dofus memes because I was like, why is no one making this? Like, why is no one making memes about Dofus? Um, and and yeah, I'm pretty sure the whole sim up thing was just very spur of the moment. And I was like, <laughs> OK, yeah, I'll just that backwards. It's like the what what's it called not the pronunciation just the, the sound of it uh -huh. it's pretty good like it sounds like some sort of name yeah um <laughs> and so it's like yeah that's good and then people will realize it's just me backwards but i will never point out that i have another channel i'll just have this completely separate but now it's ended up with people not sure if they should call me Simap or Bamis. <laughs> I think you should come out with one of your creative ways of telling the world, here's the final solution. Here's what you should do. <laughs> like some sort of announcement. <laughs> you know what? I will, but I'll have to come up with the solution first. Because I don't have that yet. <laughs> ah, maybe a girlfriend can help you with it. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. I've, I've heard you mention, um, I mean, chat and everyone can already see that there is a theme. I try to do this with every creator. So when we've had Golden Spirit, who's in the chat, thank you very much for this sub, appreciate it. Who's with us in the chat today. Uh, when he was around, we've put uh, some Brazilian uh, background with uh, Christ the Redeemer. But today, after the win research, I don't, I don't confirm this with the people I have on, but I did decide on a Minecraft theme that everybody can see here in the background. And I'm sort of curious, because I've seen a lot of uh, videos about Dofus in your channel. There was some GTA, but it seems like the most nostalgic Bamis ever is when talking about a game is Minecraft. And I wanted to get your ideas about, your thoughts on what, what's the importance of this game for you? What is it so nostalgic for you? Is it the first game you've played? What can you tell us about it? Yeah, oh, well, it goes hand in hand with Dofus, I gotta say. like. When I got my first email address with the help of my mom, mm -hmm. um, uh, like I got that email address to make a Minecraft account and to make a Dofus account, basically. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and that was like 2012, so I was 10. Uh, so I, I played, those are, because the thing is, it's not only a game I played in my childhood, because I played a ton of games in my childhood. I did that more than going outside. Mm -hmm. um, like I played a lot of Nintendo and stuff. I still do. but. Do uh, Dofus and Minecraft are games that I still play today. So gotcha. they've basically just followed me through my entire life at this point. Wow. And I am really nostalgic about Minecraft, yeah. Um, I didn't realize that that's obvious from seeing my stuff, but it's true. Uh, I grew up with, with the, some Minecraft Let's Players, you know. I, I found the game through YouTube and my friends. And I just remember a lot of great memories I had throughout, of sc uh, throughout school, playing it with my friends and... Um, watching youtubers play it like a ton it was like all i watched during some parts of my childhood and uh i think i think also just because you can do everything in that game like it's about blocks but you can just go on servers about fighting each other in all types of game modes and stuff and gotcha. i i did all of that and yeah honestly it's uh i guess for a game it really has been a big influence on my life yeah, and you can definitely detect that. And uh, for example, in, in one of your videos, you talk about version 1.0 that you have reverted back just to experience that 
maybe oh, bring yeah. you back to the earliest versions that you've played, the earliest memories that you have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is one of the games I'm curious about. I've never played it. It's one of those things that if you don't start at a certain age, it's really difficult to get into. Yeah. So I'm not really clued up on any of it. And which brings me to my next question. Some one of the videos that you were very passionate about the win one challenge in Minecraft and I couldn't understand any of what was happening. I understand this based around blocks, <laughs> but I was That's gripped good. all throughout and I've watched it not because I was researching you, but because I wanted to understand what was happening. It was so <laughs> gripping. And so it was the one where three years ago when you beat a Minecraft level in hardcore with two hearts in under 40 minutes. First of all, can you explain what that game mode is and what it means to the ignorant people like myself? And then tell us why 40 Whoa. minutes was a difficult goal to reach. Oh my god, wait, did I make a video about that? Or was, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was live? I, I don't even remember that. These are the kind of things <laughs> I can't make up. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... Yeah, <laughs> Minecraft as a game to beat is usually not up there. I mean, as a speedrunning game in general, it was not very popular for a long time, right? I don't know how much you know about the speedrunning community, but it's a real cool place. And uh, I really like it as well. Um, but Minecraft was really overlooked for a long time because the nature of it is so random. You make a new world and everything is completely random, right? Um, and so the speedrun community was quite small, but with a certain version, it got a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's when I also started trying to do my speedruns. Wow. Um, and yeah, usually you have 10 hearts, uh, which is uh, quite a lot. When you are at a certain level of the game and you get like armor or a shield where you can block attacks, Mm -hmm. You don't really die a lot, like in speedruns, you, you're not really at a risk of dying that much. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it was like a small sub goal or a random challenge stream I wanted to do was gotcha. was trying to beat Minecraft in hardcore where you uh -huh. take the most damage possible. So in uh -huh. hard mode uh -huh. <laughs> um, and with two hearts. So basically one hit from anything almost already killed you. Wow. Um, and I don't remember the, the, the run. I didn't <laughs> remember that it was under 40 minutes. You were um, 38 minutes smashing the record at the time. That was outstanding. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's just you have these certain objectives you always have to do when you need to go to this dangerous dimension and then you mm -hmm. fight the dragon that can also pretty much one shot you. Um, so sometimes it's more luck than skill probably to not get hit, mm -hmm. but it's probably one of the hardest things I have tried to do and and did do on the, on the stream it. yeah it does just hearing you talk about it, i can feel the adrenaline pumping the excitement i can tell it is an yeah. not a usual game mode which brings me to my next question is this kind of excitement when was the last time you felt anything like it but in dofus because it's a, it's it's a boring game in comparison if you think about it there's nothing mm. where you're going to die and you're running against the clock you have to sort of manufacture right. those situations <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, do you, do you mean like exciting in general or, or really hard things? That level of running against the clock and doing something where you're challenging yourself to the maximum. Okay, yeah. Because, I mean, I haven't played a ton, a ton of Dofus. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is there is one thing. Because even while I was still working on the video, I, I was still playing Dofus actually. Because Osatopia 2, for mm -hmm. some reason, really caught my attention. And I played a shit ton of it like nice. i played so much osatopia 2 yeah. i didn't play any of of the first osatopia so for me i was like wait what what did i miss that's awesome um and i think the coolest thing was i was at almost the maximum um, like the almost the tokens you need to finish all the objectives wow i was at 68 out of 69 and i wanted the final one to be beating red um that's did you play Osatopia 2 at all? I've seen a video about it. Is that is that like a difficult boss? Yeah, that's the that's the boss where you go to the snowy mountain on gotcha. on uh, I forgot the island name, the new Forge Lands for Island. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's I mean the Osatopia is filled with Pokemon references and yeah, <laughs> uh, Red was what is a character who's referenced to Red, the trainer Red from Pokemon Gold and Silver back in the day. Gotcha. Um, which which are actually also the first Pokemon games I played, and he's the hardest trainer in that game, wow. and he's also one of the hardest bosses in in this one. Uh -huh. And for a long time, I, I did a ton of attempts to beat him, and uh -huh. I'm just not that good at Dofus, uh -huh. and it felt pretty impossible for me for a long time. And I tried to get 
like tips from people but most people were like playing other classes that that just did better against ah. against those battles because uh -huh. i i was a craw which was really good for pvm but for these battles where you can't outrange people suddenly all your advantages are gone because you can't just push them back they just use some sort of teleports to get right back into melee range and when i actually beat that one and and then i didn't only beat that boss after a ton of attempts uh -huh. <laughs> um i also finished osatopia 2 which was basically actually the last thing i did and it was also like only five days from the closing of the server so i was Whoa, scared that i wasn't gonna do go. it let's yeah go. And <laughs> i had never finished an, uh, a temporis before at all with the, all the achievements wow. and i had such a good time and i was so ecstatic that i finished it my girlfriend was in the room at the same time as well so i was like oh my god i just did it and she knew all about it already because i had raged on about it for so long yeah. and that was that was a super exciting moment yeah 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 yeah. that is fantastic so you've managed to recreate that at the end with five days to spare and you finally got it and finished the entire game on that one fight yeah fabulous <laughs> it was intense yeah. man <laughs> i just want to give a shout out to bawana42 in the chat is bamis's girlfriend and she's here for support and to also poke fun at him which is a good tradition that all girlfriends should practice around the world <laughs> which brings me to my other question that will tie to uh we will tie it to bawana in one of your videos i've noticed that she gave you ideas and you say this overtly mm -hmm. while you are one of the most creative people i've seen out there as far as concepts I'm starting to think, how much of it is you and how much of it is your girlfriend? <laughs> and I can give you I a see. reference if you want to see anything in particular. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, you got me. She's actually behind this entire channel. I'm just a face Let's of it, go. you know. No, <laughs> but I know what you mean. You probably mean, mean the Minecraft yes, no taking damage the video. Damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I felt I felt it was important to give credit where credit was due. That was her idea completely. Mm -hmm. Um, and it led to me making that entire video. Um, oh yeah, there was this whole thing about my my girlfriend will hate me for this in that video as well and stuff as she just said in the chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, she's she's an incredibly incredibly uh, creative person herself, and uh, I I think that spurs on my own creativity as well. Um, I think a lot of I mean most of my dofus stuff I think was before before I I knew her or we started dating, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we 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 do so many things, you know, she paints and, and she sings and stuff and I do these YouTube things and I think we really spur on each other's creativity and stuff, yeah. Um, Outstanding. So it, and would you say you bounce off of each other's creativity to sort of re reinvigorate and do more things? Oh yeah, Keep and we're really supportive of those of those hobbies of our, uh, each other as well, you know, because sometimes it can be draining when you're tired from work and stuff, yeah. do something creative, and then yeah. when I get home and I see she's painting and stuff, I'm like, oh nice, you're painting, you know, because because we both know how how nice that feels for each other to to uh, to do those creative things where you can express yourself, and and she does bounce a lot of ideas off of me as well, or you know. The past few months she's always like you know why, why don't you stream again and stuff like that and uh I, it's not you always know, i will ask you that question we oh okay I, yeah. <laughs> okay let's not let's not take anything away yet then um but uh but even if it's not an idea that i will take uh you know at face value to use it it's usually some ideas that come back to you and then you have another idea based off of that and then that's mm. something you do you know so, and have so, you yeah, noticed that you only need to get started? Like, for instance, when she tells you, why don't you just do this? And while you may not feel like it, and the moment you start engaging with whatever activity, you just entertain the idea, you find that the energy comes afterwards. Is that something that you can relate to? Um, a little bit. Uh, for, for me, a lot of the things is also when I get an idea, I get an ex extreme burst of motivation. Mm. Like... When I got the idea, I, I, I gotta speak about the, the elephant in the room. When I got the idea for the 100 days Dofus video, okay, <laughs> I was actually working on a completely different big project um, that I never ended up finishing <laughs> uh, and just abandoned. Um, but, but I got so motivated and I wanted to do it so bad all of a sudden that uh, I wanted to drop everything I was doing 
to then to then do that instead. And then sometimes when it's a really long project, like the 100 days to do, yeah, I I start losing motivation along the way and stuff. I don't um, blame you. Yeah. Yeah, cause cause I mean I have a short attention span, man. I found mm. out I found out last year or something that I have ADD as well, and uh, I think that's one of the ways uh, I, I I I experienced that as well. That it's really hard to stick with something for a long time. Yes, <laughs> especially when you have the type yeah. of brain I call it a monkey brain that does not like to settle on anything and do it on repeat. The moment you know yeah. what the task is, you sort of get bored and look for novelty. Oh, yeah. Urgency somewhere oh, yeah. else. Yeah, I definitely want to ask you about that if you don't mind. Um, working on any project for <laughs> two years requires an incredible level of discipline. It's just mind blowing to me. And since you've mentioned the elephant in the room, the video you've done uh, in, a, in one bit of it, you show that your files were started in 2021. We're in 2024, yep. so let's say two to three years of having that in the back of your mind. You're always thinking about it. You're always working mm. towards it. How do you get that discipline? Is it the strength of the idea or where, where does that come from? Oh, that, that's a good question because I came really close to abandoning that project too <laughs> throughout throughout the time. Um, uh, I just got distracted by the chat, sorry. So now I have to <laughs> re refine my, my train of thought because because Benedetto just said there's an ad break. Take your um, time, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, Feel free to grab a drink if you want to think through it or while giving people time to come back as well. Oh, for sure. No, uh, uh, yeah. I The thing is, I don't think that I'm a very disciplined person at all. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> um, I didn't work on it every day for two years, you know. I had a lot of gotcha. time where I I didn't do it. I, I didn't do any of it. And then I felt bad about not continuing to work on it. I, I used to be way too hard on myself with that. Um, I, I used to think like when I wasn't productive working on videos on a day, then the day wasn't a good day or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was also a lot of private stuff. Uh, I started going to therapy and, and uh, worked on myself. Then I moved out from home. Uh, and all that stuff and obviously I mean I worked on that video in three different places <laughs> I worked on it at my mom's house when I still lived there I yeah. worked on it uh, at my old apartment and at this apartment now that I live at yeah 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 um, and and uh, yeah it's just always I really wanted to prove to myself that I could finish it which was really something that kept me going even when I hadn't worked on it a lot mm -hmm. Um, and always those spurts of motivation, you know, when I finished the recording, I got really motivated because I was like, wow, this went so well. I can make yeah. an, like, this can be an amazing story. And I'm really motivated <laughs> by that. And I yeah. finished like the intro and I got motivated by that. And I finished yeah. the thumbnails, got really motivated by that. Um, and that uh, sometimes I also wanted to quit and start doing other stuff again. And, and then I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I made this like with Defy and I sometimes talk to him about the video and we made jokes about how long it would take me to finish, uh, <laughs> which which ended up being true in the end. Um, but uh, I also wanted to finish it so I could show it to him because he was so involved in the video. Uh -huh. And a lot of it was not wanting to let him down as well, actually. Uh, ah. I am I am quite a people pleaser, and I was when when like one of the last things always was uh, keeping me from quitting was actually you know I want Defy to be able to see this. I want to show it to my friend Farrell, who is a great friend of mine in in the Dofus community. And, Isn't uh, that just amazing? I'll just qualify that it's called externality. Once you have an accountable party oh, that is external to yourself. Oh. All of a sudden, you don't want to let them down. While you can lawyer yourself out of not letting yourself down, it is easier to do that when the accountability comes from the outside. And thank yeah. you very much for being open about that. While it may not be fun as a topic, I think it is important and it needs to be talked about. Because oh, yeah. generally, the gaming community sort of shares a lot of the experiences that you're talking about today. So if someone can see themselves in you and 
see how you've managed to work with what the situation that you have and make something that is worthy of praise of being watched of being talked about then they too have hope which is brilliant thank you very much for mentioning that and yeah, no worries uh, i wanted to take this opportunity right here because you've mentioned a couple of names and i wanted to show one of the people that you've mentioned today they've sent you a message i've contacted them to get them over here but sadly they had a i don't know how you can forget that you have an actual tour <laughs> music tour going and they just forgot that it was doing happening, well. at, just oh, sorry, happening at the same time so it is what it is but let's watch the message all together from one of your favorite people that you've mentioned today let me just quickly get it up <laughs> okay yeah that, now i'm really curious <laughs> yeah i'll stop the music so we can get the full voila the music is gone and i'm just going to put this full screen if i can get this done really quickly where is it where is it where is it yes i need to share my right screen sorry for this <laughs> you think i'd be prepared given that i had three weeks to do this <laughs> right <laughs> there he is oh is everyone God. able to see this in the chat i'll just put the volume up a bit more so everybody can get the full force of it short video to congratulate Hello, Bamis. Hope you're doing well. Just a short video to congratulate you for your last upload, which is amazing. It's like the best video I've seen on Dofus for like years. So congratulations. You're a beast. I love you so much. And kisses on your forehead, my little Switzerland guy. <laughs> that was amazing. This oh my was God. my first time seeing it as well. So here we go. That was outstanding. <laughs> he's such a sweet guy. Like I don't know why. I don't know why he's so nice to me, but he's just such an such a nice guy. He's lovely. Yeah. I mean, I've contacted him about you and all of a sudden I captured his attention the moment he saw your name in one of the messages. Boom. He was on it. He recorded it. He was he stayed in touch. He really wanted you to see that. So oh my God. thank you very much, Farrell, if you see this in the future. Thank you for that lovely, lovely message. <laughs> I got to thank him as well. That's, yeah. that's so cute. And I'm a bit sad that he couldn't make it, but it is how it is. We will carry on uh, from here. Yeah. Do you, by the way, know uh, what, what he does in like Dofus and stuff? Are you educated on him as well? Um, not as much, but I'll, I'll, how about you tell us more about him? You take the opportunity to tell us more about him. Yeah, um, so you, you also speak French, right? You speak like a ton of languages. Sometimes, when I'm in a good mood only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so have you heard of Best of Dofus? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's Feral's channel, and uh, he also oh, yeah. has his own channel. Mm -hmm. um, and and he's he's such a big name in the Dofus community. He's been at like Dofus and Kama events and stuff as well. It's yes. really crazy. And mm. from the beginning, when he like found found me, I don't even remember how uh, found my channel back in the day when I started. He was he gave me so many compliments. He was so supportive. He made an entire video on his best of Dofus channel with over twenty thousand subscribers. Uh -huh. To shout out English Dofus creators, which gave all of the people he mentioned back then, which was also like Defy and stuff, uh, mm. a big push. And just, he's always been so positive and supportive and uh, does so many cool things as well. Like he, mm. he frequently streams to a ton of people and started doing music as well, which I think, I, I think is going great for him because I listened to it and it sounds awesome. Yeah, I don't know the energy on that guy, man. <laughs> incredible. Yeah, it's it's honestly incredible. He's yeah. he's a crazy guy as well. Crazy to be around. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. The way I found out about him, obviously, because you mentioned that I do speak French, so I consume pretty much all of the Dofus content out there in pretty much any language. Yeah. And now after uh, be becoming friends with Golden Spirit, I keep an eye on the Portuguese, even even though I don't speak it. I just see what topics they cover, how they go about their creativity, how they approach topics anyway. And one of the videos that really caught my attention was Feral on top of his best stuff, which is hilarious to watch. <laughs> the other one was his video where he uh, gave credits to English content creators and he did it yeah. sincerely. And he gave them the time. He was the only person in the French community that took the time 
to look out there and give them a spotlight. Say, look, here's what I found, these treasure troves, and here is why. Not just mentioning them in names, but actually getting into the details of what makes them brilliant. Yeah, it's so nice of him. When you say uh, he's the only one looking out there, um, it's almost true, but I do feel obligated real quick to mention as well uh, sure. the, the, the Dofus YouTuber Tim Tobias. Um, I, I don't keep up with his content, what he does mm. that much because I don't speak very good French, so I can't really watch the videos, sadly. But I, I know he's made a ton of videos. I'm not sure if he still makes them, but I hope so. And he's really big as well. And yes. he also like uh, commented on my videos and, and was really nice. And he even gave me this like challenge, challenge. for one of yeah. my videos. I was going to uh, ask you about that later. Please yeah. don't give us any more details. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I just got to mention him as well because he's also a, mm. a great guy from the French community. Um, obviously, when you do play Dofus, you'll, you'll uh, encounter French people one way or another. And those are just some really great French people that I've met. That through is it. outstanding. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, uh, I didn't mention him because he didn't do any direct videos. But yes, I have noticed that he has gotten in touch with you and has given you a challenge, which was turned into a video later on. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to go back to the thing that we've just talked about just now about the difficulties of understanding how one's mind works and putting the right coping mechanisms so that you can achieve your goals at the end. You're obviously getting better with that and it started by knowing what the situation looks like and knowing how to deal with it and having a fabulous girlfriend that is a, a bedrock of support for your creativity and overall happiness. Is there anything that through this medium right here that we're doing now, that the English community, French community, anybody watching this, what can we do as people who watch your creativity? What can we do to keep you on track, to help you get where you want? Is there anything that we can do for you? Something that gets you excited, that keeps you Damn. wanting to make more? Well, honestly, uh, that's a really hard one to answer because mm -hmm. uh, I don't post a lot generally or keep up with a lot of stuff. You know, I don't really use like Twitter or or Instagram for that matter. And mm. I, I have had a schedule of uploading videos one time every two years at this point. Um, <laughs> but some like the biggest motivation uh, recently has been when I uploaded the video and I didn't really in a way care for how many people watched it. But what I was excited for from the very beginning was people uh, like I, I knew there was going to be hopefully some people that really enjoy it and people sharing how they enjoyed it or, you know, how it made them nostalgic about the about Dofus again and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just what makes me so motivated because that's exactly what I want to do with with making videos. It's like not just I do want to entertain people. I want to make them laugh. But, you know, uh, it, it's really great when I get to touch them in that way, you know? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So would you say uh, posting comments and making uh, the impact on their person known to you is the way to go? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously you don't have to make up comments or anything, but that's just what's, what's uh, motivated me the most is when people take their time and mm. share their experience with, with, with uh, with, with those videos and I mean also like constructive negative feedback you know when something upset them about it too that also spurs me on to to do better you know yeah I think it might be really difficult for anyone to send you negative feedback given my next topic and the questions I will ask you but yeah you've heard the man if you've watched one of his videos and you really appreciate something about them it made you feel a certain way it reminded you of a certain epoch take the time to put a comment through. I was baffled by how quickly you responded, so I can tell for a fact that you do read every comment. Whether you respond or not, I, <laughs> I know do. that you see them. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. And I also try to, uh, I also try to uh, uh, respond to most of the comments on, on that video I made uh, mm -hmm. that I uploaded on the 31st of, of December, which is, by the way, no accident as well, that it's on the last day of 2023. <laughs> yes. uh, but that's a whole different thing. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to force anyone of anything, obviously, but, uh, yeah, those have been great. Fantastic. Um, I wanted to sort of segue, but without doing it too vigorously, and you are, as far as I'm concerned, when I look at people, I tend to sort of boil them down to something, one or two qualities. 
things that I've noticed that are particular to them, that makes them interesting, that I want to ask them about. And I've got a couple of things that I wanted to get your opinions on. And the first one is to do with what you've mentioned earlier, the collabs that you've had. So in the span of 50 minutes of conversation with you so far, you've dropped so many names, so many celebrities, and we've had one of them send you a message. So as far as I'm concerned, you're one of the masters of collab. Despite being in a niche, within a niche, so that's Dofus and then the English community, yeah. you've still managed to spread your wings farther than what the smallest niche allows and speak with various peoples. So between Tom, Tim Tobias sending you a challenge, the conversation and challenges you've done with Defy, uh, Feral from here, uh, what can you tell us about this ability that you have? How do you make these things happen? How do you get in touch? Oh, sorry, <laughs> the dog is getting a bit vigorous. <laughs> she wants to ask you a question as well, don't you? <laughs> oh, that's such so, a cute dog. <laughs> she's adorable. Um, so how do you go about making these connections and actually spreading your wings further than the niche allows? <laughs> oh yeah, um, I, I never really thought of that as my thing to make happen. What I, what I did always think was there should be more collaborations in Dofus. I mean, it's 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 a hard game to collaborate on content on, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, mentioning Minecraft again, it's really easy to make collaborative Minecraft content. You can just go on a server together and play there. Um, and and with Dofus, I, I, I mean, I tried doing it with Defy a lot because Defy and I, we get along so great. Um, honestly, I would call him a good friend even if we talk just sometimes at random points. Um, but but every time I call him and and we call for something about content, like even before we start recording, we just throw around like shade and, and jokes. <laughs> yeah. um, and and when it comes to other people like Feral and uh, Tim Tobias, honestly, uh -huh. I would attribute a lot of it to luck. Um, okay. I I don't even like I don't know you know why Tim Tobias um, reached out or uh, why why Feral wanted to to give me a shout out or something. Yeah. Um, in, in their words, maybe or something, I don't know. I, I don't want to like seem arrogant at all. They they appreciated my way of going around about the content and said that, uh, I did a good job with, with the quality of it and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess I got to make those connections even across language barriers because they uh, they, they just thought my content was good. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm way too shy to reach out to any of those guys, you know? I mean, I'm sure if if you did reach out to people like that, like even you reaching out to Pharrell for, for a video, right? Yeah. That's just... Sometimes you just got to ask. Um, Absolutely. But you just got to also be down to, to try and find out ideas and stuff to collaborate together because it is just really fun. And you have no shortage of ideas. So maybe if you can take one thing from our conversation today, regardless of how the rest of it goes, just ask. I'm baffled since I've started doing this format right here where I reach out to people. I have yet to have someone not respond to my message. Literally, I'm mm -hmm. baffled. I'm like, who is this guy that has started making content one month ago, reaching out to these people? I've been doing it for seven, ten years that are established and they still take the time to respond. Whether it is positive or negative, whether they say yes or no, is up to them and their life circumstances. But they do respond, people do pick up, which is amazing. And I'm, I thank everyone who does take the time to respond to smaller creators or anybody who reaches out to them. It can make a big difference. And just before we go on a break, because we have uh, a break every hour, so you also can stay up to date with your energy levels, uh, water and stuff. I wanted to propose something interesting for you. I, an attempt at an answer to the question that you've asked. Why do these people contact me? Why do they want to call up? You have your own idea, but I want to give you tangible evidence for why they do like you. Oh, okay. Despite having never known you. So, <laughs> by the way, I'm gonna, mm, go on. Can I just, I, I wanted to get that in there for, uh, before we move on. Sure, sure, uh, sure. <laughs> about people responding to you, right? Uh -huh. um, it's something I heard recently. It's the thing when you reach out to people for something like an interview or a podcast and, yeah. and they're the topic, the like advantage you have, even as a small creator, is that people love talking about themselves. Yes. <laughs> so if it's you give me a platform, topic. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll talk about myself for two hours. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to kill him with embarrassment, Seth. I'm only sticking to factual things. And... I'm going to give you some background context before I show you the evidence that I have. 
Some two weeks ago, I've decided to run an experiment. Essentially what I'm trying to do with this channel is sort of offer something on top of gameplay. I mean, mm -hmm. Dofus is exciting and everything, but mostly you play on your own. When you look for guides, you look for, for a practical reason. But what other value have we got to offer? And I think it's the sense of community, a place for people to hang out, to make friendships. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the chat right now, I see people that didn't know each other, that will come and chat to each other in the chat. That's brilliant. That is a symptom yeah. of a growing community. That's what I like. And in the spirit of doing things right, I went around and asked the 10 top streamers in the French community, the 10 biggest names, Humility, Uz, and I've asked them one similar question. What are English content creators missing? And all of them gave me a, an answer, a form of answer. Some of them just laughed in my face. <laughs> Some <laughs> others have told me to learn French and stop doing it in English. It's a French game after all. But <laughs> some others have taken the time to give me a well-reasoned answer. And one of them mentioned you. And I wanted you to see this and understand from what? a third party point of view, why is it that people want to collaborate and work with you? Again, sorry okay. chat, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the music and set it up so we can all watch it together. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you asked humility? <laughs> That's crazy. Alright, let's pump up the volume and just set it up so that everyone is able to see the right screen. Are we all able to see it? my right? Oh, sorry. Huh? Ah, it's the wrong button that I'm pressing. Right. So, for some context, this is a streamer called Barbudus. His whole vibe is about being a bearded guy, gentle, kind, and nice very chill vibe and he will answer your questions softly he plays with friends mainly they hit each other inside the fights while doing gobble dungeon and they have a laugh about it and that's the whole spiel so i went ahead and i asked this guy about why the english community is lacking so much what do they need to change and as part of his response he says this Dofus FR Un qui avait fait une vidéo en anglais This is the bit Il y en avait un qui avait fait une vidéo en anglais là Elle était trop trop bien Le mec, la vidéo c'était J'ai joué à Dofus pendant euh... oh, C'était 90 jours, un truc comme ça Et elle était trop bien la vidéo Did you catch that Oh I did but I have no idea what you really said. I, That's I don't know fine. <laughs> that, that is absolutely fine. <laughs> I will offer some translation. So what has happened is I've asked him what are people lacking and he said it's a French game so it's really difficult for the English community to play it to begin with so there's very few numbers. However, if you want to attract those people and he was in the middle of this sentence, he remembered you. He said, oh, there was this guy who made a video about uh, playing 90 days or something like that. And that was really good. I've watched that. Imagine a French streamer who was doing it full time for a living, took the time to stop and watch and understand the concept, something that you've done that blew his mind. And that effort, that really good effort made it so that others realize that we exist, the English side exists. So that's wow, my evidence man. for why people will pick up and want to collaborate with you. It's the quality of your work. It's yeah, it's crazy that he mentioned me like that. Like I'm prompted. <laughs> you really just asked him and he said that. Um I mean if you want to know real quick, I see the audience on the video, right? And mm -hmm. I did not fail to notice that. 44.8% of the people who watch the video, almost half of the people are from France. Right. And then there's there's other uh, countries that speak French, as far mm. as I'm aware, like Morocco, Canada, Belgium are also in the top five. Mm. Um, yeah, which is crazy. And obviously a lot of commenters as well talked about, you know, French and how in their schools, like everyone talked about Dofus when they were young and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I know about that streamer just from his name. I never mm -hmm. really watched him, but mm -hmm. it's crazy that he said that. I'm I'm really glad he enjoyed the video. Yeah, and I wanted to present that as a as a sort of tangible. I didn't I didn't make him say it. I was just a an incognito chatter in his uh, stream, and he took the time to tell me about that, 
because it was good. He didn't mention any of my videos, he mentioned your videos. So please do carry on the quality of work because it gets noticed. And quality is recognized universally regardless of what language you speak. French, English, Arabic, Mandarin, does not matter. If it's yeah. good, people will watch and comment on it. And you've given us some stats about how that is absolutely true. Hello again, everyone. There's this peculiar thing before we resume. Uh, my dog knows how to open doors, which is the freakiest thing ever. <laughs> so I'll close the door <laughs> to prevent noise coming through. And she will go and check on uh, single mom wifey in the kitchen in the hopes that she will drop her something and she'll open that door. <laughs> and then she'll come back and open oh this my one God. and jump for me. In the process, opening all doors in the house. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Hello, hey. Dreams Void. Before Sorry? we resume, I also need to say something. Actually, oh, go on, go on. Um, the floor is cause, yours. Because I got the I got the chance to talk to my girlfriend real quick, right? Who's mm -hmm. also been in chat and watching and stuff. Yeah. And she's too shy to say herself in chat, but uh, she said that she doesn't really watch streams because her attention span is is way too short, and and she can't like she's not patient enough to to just watch live streams. But she was really impressed with how well you do everything and how well you're like conducting this this talk and stuff and thank you and very much i wanted to say that she she finds it great to like and really interesting to watch the stream thank you bawa um it is i'm gonna say something about it in response because I, I i have a difficulty <laughs> with the uh, compliments it is same man but you're still bombarding me with them <laughs> like shut the fuck <laughs> you are the man of the hour you are the golden boy today um it is easy, it's surprisingly easy to do a good job when your guest is spectacular. All you have to do is just poke them in various places, and if you've just researched them for five minutes, you should be able to start a sentence that they will turn into a 15 minute nugget of gold. So, yeah, a lot of the credit has to be given to Bamis. And you did say earlier he has a difficulty taking credit for his work. I don't um, know, man. You have a difficulty <laughs> taking credit as well. You went through my entire catalog of content in research. And I mean, I also, I, I mean, I checked out your stuff before saying yes. And I've, I've watched some of your interviews. Like I love the, the first talk you did with Eslix and Washington, Mr. Thank Black you, and stuff. You. I watched all of that. You do do a good job. And uh, you, you just got to accept that now as well, okay? Nothing you will say today will spare you the, the upcoming embarrassment. There will be more. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just going to pick up a question from the chat, which was, what is occurring? So, Dreams Void. Every Saturday, uh, wherever possible, I have a conversation with a content creator. And it's especially from the international community. And today we have the fabulous Bamis, who has recently created a two hour long video that everybody wanted to know more about. And we're so happy and delighted that he's around with us today to pick up our questions. So if you do have any questions, pop them in the chat. If they, were, if they are good, I will push them. I, will, I mean, I don't have to because you can read the chat and you might pick them up yourself. <laughs> okie doke, okie doke, okie doke. Shall we resume or uh, is chat having a good time? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mouth just building up blood for <laughs> big plot twist later and a roast. That's the other uh, Swiss fella that I've told you about, the fabulous Sevi. Oh. Yeah. Do you he's know amazing. where from Switzerland he's from? Is he German or, or French or Italian? Oh, he talks all of them, all of the languages, but I think he's mostly wow. German. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's he's fabulous. very rare. It's very rare to meet uh, Swiss people online. That's why I'm like, oh. Because it's just such a small country. Online or in real life, it is one of the rarest nationalities I have come across alongside those tiny little uh, countries like Andorra and, you know, those minuscule mm -hmm. microcosm, Liechtenstein. But every time in my life that I think about it, every time I've met a Swiss person, they were outstanding in, in one way or another. And they leave me with more questions than answers. I can give you a quick anecdote if you want about that. There was a gentleman when I was working and studying at the same time. I was working uh, at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. This Swiss guy turns up one day, they've hired him. This guy is built like Ryan Reynolds, looks like a movie star. And I talked, I'm like, what are you doing here in the UK, man? Everybody's usually either studying or they live there permanently. It was like, I wanted to discover the UK, so I've got a part-time job and I'm gonna travel the world. I'm like, what are Swiss people? <laughs> what are they? <laughs> they live life differently to the rest of us and we love that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. A very special country, I gotta say. That's that's 
I love being here as well. It is amazing. Right on. Are you ready to proceed? Shall we, yeah, shall we sure. ca carry on? I did have to refill my single malt scotch whiskey glass, so it has to be ready for the next bit. <laughs> awesome. Right on. There were two topics that we've touched upon. I've told you I was going to ask you, or I was going to mention two things. One of them we've discussed. It's your ability to spread your wings wider than your niche or whatever you happen to be and make connections, genuine connections. The other one I realized is, this is personal to you, but my understanding of it, is you're the master of steaks, high steaks, not the steaks that you cut with a knife and eat. <laughs> right. <laughs> but steaks as in um, thresholds, bars, so you set goals. And this is something I've noticed as a sort of hidden theme in all of your videos. If you take any creation of yours, what you can boil it down is to an idea, a really high goal, and then there's tension that leads up to it, and then you blow it up, you blow it up when you reach that goal. And that's what makes the brilliancy and the brilliancy of your videos. What can you tell us about this way of thinking? Does it come to you naturally? Is it the basis of your thinking? You're not going to do anything unless there is some sort of record to break, some sort of... What can you tell us about it? <laughs> oh man, well, I am really competitive, um, and... I've become more conscious of it recently about telling stories with my videos, which is something I applied to that two hour video. Mm -hmm. um, but but I did just pick up a lot from the hours upon hours I watched on YouTube of great creators making great content. Mm -hmm. Which is just, I mean, they have stakes in, in their videos because it just makes for a great story, you know, it, it, it adds tension and it makes it so entertaining. I mean, I, I, I can show you this, um, two things actually. Um, first of all, I think with the ideas I think of and the ideas I do take, because obviously you have more ideas than you end up executing on, <laughs> um, that, yeah. that the good idea has, has to be entertaining and it feels entertaining when there's stakes. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and I have this piece of paper, which is from the 100 days idea. Oh yeah, um, you show that in your video, don't you? The the scheme of what you're thinking of no. doing the quest. Oh, that's different. That's not that one. Okay, uh, okay this okay. is just uh, a mind map I drew, um, like one and a half years ago. And when I moved, I moved this as well and hung it up again. And now I moved again, and I still hung it up again when I was working the video because yeah. it reminded me of the ideas, like the way I want to execute this video and stuff. And one thing I wrote on this was uh, story, right? And uh -huh. then the point stakes uh, in my own words hard shit <laughs> oh <laughs> because, let's go <laughs> <laughs> because for the story it was important to me to have stakes and stuff like that yeah um i even had the idea that i wrote down here to have a level goal and to bet money on on that goal that i would have to donate money or something if i don't reach it but yeah. i didn't end up doing that because that felt way too artificial and stuff but it was an idea i had as well that is incredible um, yeah, and, and right now I'm obviously not doing nothing just because I'm not uploading. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've been working on on a totally different uh, project for myself that would probably end up on the Bamas channel. Okay. Um, and I made this whole master document to start planning all of this out. And in the title of the document, because because that sentence really stuck with me, was um, no risk, no story. And gotcha. I really like that. And that's wow. why I like going for big ideas and big stakes because the cool thing about big stakes is not only is it entertaining and stuff, but it's really, really awesome. No matter if you achieve the goal in the end or not, it just, it's just the, I don't know, to me, it just feels like the best way to make content. I'm just glad that I've spotted something that you actually consciously go about. A hundred days yeah. of this, I need to reach this, the video stops when I get there. It's always something exciting that gets you gripped from the get-go. And I realize that's the reason why people watch your video until the end. Most likely you'll find that you have the average view time per video higher than the average of many, many other content creators. I think it's because you do that Mr. Beast thing of gripping them in the first, just from the title. If you read the title, I'll stop this when this happens. They're like, I'm not going, I need to see it. Does it happen? Does it not happen? So it grips you. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. This is, uh, I mean, not to my credit much at all. Uh, I, I consume like so much stuff about YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I read books about YouTube. Uh, I, I, I am in a paid Discord community of YouTube creators. Wow. Uh, 
I I watch YouTube videos about making YouTube videos. I have mm. been for years because I just really, really care about this. Because uh, like ever since I was a child, I wanted mm. to become a YouTuber like full time. And that's still something I'm trying to do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the whole thing about how to make a good story and stuff, like how do you tell stories? That's just something that comes up a lot, you know, like and with Mr. Beast as well, because I watched some of his keynotes from uh, from Vid Summit, which is like this YouTuber uh, YouTuber convention. Uh -huh. And and it's stakes is an integral part part to a lot of YouTube content, I think. Yeah. So that's gotcha. where I picked that up a lot as well. It just pays for everyone to know that making a great video is a conscious effort. It's not an accident. It is definitely not an accident, as as oh, we have seen now. There's a lot of elements that you need to be very meticulous about thinking about before, implementing in the right way, and then people pick up on it whether they want it or not. It took me about 40 hour plus video watching to realize, holy shit, everything that he does is high intensity. What is this thing? <laughs> and I had to look it up and found that it's called high stakes. But for someone who hasn't <laughs> researched it, they, they're just a they sort of under the grip of it. Yeah, uh, that's just the whole thing. And you said it. I, I'm gr I'm glad that it, it worked out this way that you mentioned uh, that it grips you from the moment you see the title because that's exactly the goal. And I'm really glad that worked because <laughs> this first impression moment of, of the thumbnail and the title is also something. Nice. Um, it's something I spend a lot of time on as well because of this. I These, will pick you yeah, up on that. Please, meticulous please details. do not tell us any more details about that. That is a topic oh, that man. I wanted to ask you for my, me personally. I think given that I'm doing okay, the yeah. efforts of putting all this together, I wanted to oh, ask sure. you a couple of questions yeah. about how you make content so I can learn from you and perhaps deliver better English content in the future. Yeah, I didn't even know about Mr. Black and, and Washington. Uh, I, I got to know them through that interview you did. Mm -hmm. And also Eslix, I, I knew about him from when I was actively making Dofus videos. I was like aware of him starting out because mm -hmm. as he said in that at podcast, <laughs> he was posting stuff on Benjamite's Discord yeah. back then. Um, and starting out, like I, I didn't follow him that much because obviously I didn't play a lot of Dofus in the last years and stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I've been checking out his channel again more and stuff and he's doing such a great job. I got to say that as well. Like... He makes so much consistent content. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. My wife even asked me to marry him after I've paid him too many compliments about his consistency. I said he makes one <laughs> video every two days. He's really good at it. I was just like, all right. All yeah, right. It's insane. Why not? You're very good. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. So we've talked about collabs just so we can close this topic once and for all. Thank you very much for playing. <laughs> uh, if there is one content creator out there, now that you're more familiar with the scene, who's making content and stuff, if you were to come back and sort of find more time and consistency to make stuff, who would you like, if they watch this now or later, to just send you a message and be like, let's do something together? Who would you like to contact you out of firm? Mm. Yeah, that's a really hard one. I mean, mm. we're obviously doing something together right now. I've, I've been able to do stuff with Defy, who obviously doesn't really do stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Benjamite is someone who I knew a little bit, but also doesn't make Dofus videos anymore now. Um, but I, I mean, I just maybe spoiled that a little bit, but yeah, probably Eslix because uh, yeah, he, he's he's got a great personality. So Viper as well in the chat, yeah, yeah. Viper's doing so much great stuff in the English community. Mm -hmm. um, I saw some of that with like the creator events he does and stuff. That's also, honestly insane. Um, and you really feel the amount of effort and stuff he puts in. That's also really great. Like those those two guys, um, in, in Dofus, there's so few people and then so few people out of that that make content. So um, yeah, those two people, like those two guys make, make such great quality stuff and have a great personality and stuff. So it's just like entertaining with them as well, like, or with Eslix as well, that I saw from the beginning what he made and now uh -huh. what he does now, you can just see how much more comfortable he got with making <laughs> yeah. videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's really awesome. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen because I'm not really making Dofus content, but uh, those those would probably be my top picks. Nice, nice. Thank you very much for giving us actual names. And if you guys are hearing, I know Eslix is going to rewatch this later on. If you guys have heard your name and you're interested, there's the man. He's very, very responsive on Discord and yeah, on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> that is true cool, imagine cool, not cool, saying cool. single mode hey i did mention him at the beginning 
I said that we're doing something right now. We are already collabing, okay? It's fine, it's fine. I'm not a PVM or PvP pro. All I do is chat with people. That's all I do for the moment. Right. I want to tackle something. Are, are you still comfortable going or should we take a break now? Because we're approaching the two-hour mark. Should we still, oh, I'm still good. pick up a couple yeah. of more questions? Cool, cool, cool. In one of your videos, you uh, have engaged. This is one of the things that I really, really like about you is that you had a Discord where people could come and speak with you, bounce ideas off of you, and then on the basis of that, create content. I've seen that you've asked them for ideas and they've pushed you towards PvP. You were uncomfortable with that. <laughs> yeah. You've done it. You look like you've enjoyed it. <laughs> but what were some of the craziest things that your Discord community has pushed you towards? <laughs> Oh, what was one of the craziest things? Is that what yeah. you said? Sorry, I didn't understand. What, what okay. sorts of uh, crazy things have they asked you to do that you've never had the time or actually Ooh. done? <laughs> oh man, I don't even remember back then. Mm. Uh, they, there were so many ideas. The thing is, usually you don't like to say that to your community, but most of the stuff people say, like if, if you go to comments on, on a, for example, on a big video with like a million views and most of the newest comments, not mm -hmm. the top uploaded ones are, you know, stupid so a lot of the ideas you get are also pretty stupid um but there were some really awesome ones like people consistently being like you should do pvp because you will suck at it um, ah, that's what they wanted to see the suffering and pain <laughs> yeah i remember because it somehow became my thing to do these long videos like rushing 10 million commas or maging uh four hours or something to make an apx so that just didn't happen or four percent rest exo <laughs> or whatever yeah um i don't remember anything exactly but i know there were so many uh videos where they wanted me to do something until i finished it like <laughs> i don't even remember probably i also did gotcha. the ball grot fight um yeah. i'm sure someone asked me to do okredophus in one video at some, at some point before or That's like insane. vulgar stuff and anything like that. <laughs> like people got crazy with wanting to see me suffer. But I also noticed that that was a good format, generally speaking. People for some reason like to go on YouTube and see other people suffer. Yeah, they, they literally did tell you. <laughs> we That's the fun part for us, is when you suffer, when they put some cr incredible ideas at you. And that's why I was sort of curious to know what sorts of insane things they've put out there that you had to reject and say no to. <laughs> yeah, so I wish I remembered good. more, but it, it's been too long ago and I don't yeah. have the Discord anymore oh, no, I'm, I'm starting to realize that I'm talking about things that happened three and a half years ago that I'm bringing back now, <laughs> yeah. as if they just happened last night for you. But yeah, right. I appreciate that we even with that in mind you're smashing and thank you very much for all the answers you've been giving us today oh yeah sure this is a personal favorite question of mine from looking at your content right so i've consumed pretty much everything that you've put out there and i've decided after that after the voice in my head changed and became you i decided to make a couple of videos and you know what instantly my style changed i've added subtitles it's more about quick and funny quips it's no longer tedious it's more fun and engaging and with that i realized that you're the master of stakes you know how to make engaging content I'm wondering, what do you know about the algorithm? Because every time you put a video out there, everything sort of works together. The title, the thumbnail, the content, the length, the music. What do you know about the algorithm that the average content creator does not know about? What can you tell us? Oof. I mean, I could go on for hours talking about YouTube and, and the intricacies, honestly. <laughs> uh, not it, from me being topic? smart. Uh, yeah, but from stuff <laughs> I picked up because even especially in the last year and stuff, uh, when I've, I've I've been talking like like I exchange a lot with like other or not other but with big creators as well with like established people and stuff and and a lot of people share their knowledge you know mm -hmm. um, one big thing that a lot of average content creators uh, also in a dofa space because you know in Minecraft for example there's so many people making videos that there's just Basically, with people making videos, the percentage of people being very good at it is obviously very small. Mm -hmm. And something I see with a lot of Dofus channels because there just aren't that many. So there aren't a lot of channels doing it very well. Mm -hmm. um, is, is the importance of thumbnails and titles, mm -hmm. um, especially like you said. Because like you can make the best video 
you can make, right? Like I can make a two hour video for two years, but it doesn't matter if no one clicks on it in the yeah. words of Mr. Beast. So it's crazy how people undervalue how important it is to make a thumbnail and title. Um, like it, a lot of people praise making the thumbnail and title before you make the actual video, which is something I do as well. And I recommend like, I wouldn't make a video if you can't think of a good thumbnail and title. And gotcha. uh, it, it also is really good to practice those by like going back through your videos and making new thumbnails for them and titles maybe. Uh, like a lot of videos end up dead in the water. And if you make be better packaging, uh, that can give them a boost and revive them a bit again. again. Gotcha, um, gotcha. And probably another big thing is that I can mention at the top of my head is uh, the start of videos. Like if you've ever made videos, you look at the retention graph, right? Uh -huh. um and it basically just goes like this like whoop uh at the beginning everyone leaves right yeah uh, or that's where the most people leave and when yeah. they decide to stay they stay most like a lot more often throughout through the whole video gotcha. um and so you should put a lot of emphasis on like your first 30 seconds one minute of the video um like when i wrote the intro for example for my two hour video can i um, can i just interrupt you there just yeah. before you mention that very bit, I've done some digging and I think I've gone too far. Don't act surprised. I have found something that I yeah. wanted to get your opinion on. I know it was no accident that that video blew up, but I think this speaks about how you think that you've gone to such length. Don't ask me where I got this, but this is a screenshot from your work about how you <laughs> all the ideas that title that people see nowadays on your video you've thought about it so much what can you tell us that is that we just can't see here what can you tell us more about right. how you come up with the title and why are there a hundred titles <laughs> <laughs> okay so obviously don't write first off if you want to make youtube videos and write this down don't write 100 titles that is not a good idea because <laughs> okay. that's a very like bad idea because you'll have the paralysis of choice because you'll have too much to choose from and overthink everything mm -hmm. for me that was just a challenge um yeah i wrote 100 titles because i said i the title of that chapter is 100 title challenge and this whole screenshot is from my 100 days to uh google doc uh -huh. which has the script, which has my 11 attempts of writing the intro. I uh -huh. wrote 11 versions. Wow. Uh, the whole like idea and all the details I want to have in it. Like whenever I had an idea, for example, like over one year ago, um, to spoil the ending of the video, there's this montage that goes back in time in Incarnam throughout the whole video. And there was a random evening or something like over a year ago where I thought of that idea um, to have that montage that goes back through time because it's the exact place where the adventure started. Yeah. Because I heard that song from Mario Odyssey, one of my favorite games of all time. Oh. Um, and it's a lullaby version of a song at the start of the game. Uh -huh. And I happened to use that song uh, fossil falls in the intro of the video uh -huh. so i used the lullaby version of that uh song at the end of the video as a callback to the beginning of the video you yeah. know um, you close the and, loop. right so i had that idea and and for example that's something i wrote down immediately there to keep in mind for the entire process <laughs> and i also wrote down like inspiration and everything because i thought so much about this video wow I mean, yeah. that, that goes to show that a successful video does take a lot of thinking, a lot of work. It's not completely random. It's not an accident that you go viral or that makes something that people recognize as quality. There's a lot of thinking behind it. 100 titles, 15 intros, uh, marvelous thinking about the songs and music and how it ties the story together and loops back to close the story together. I mean, my mind is blown. I think my next video will get a million views from a record of 1,800. Nice. I'm so ready for this. Awesome. Oh, by the way, I also made five thumbnails if you ever want to see those or if you want to show those. Wow. Yeah, feel free to show us. Yeah, everything that yeah, people might want to see. I mean, also just today, I changed the thumbnail of the video, actually, uh, to oh. another one of the ones I made. You can just see that out there because 
uh, that's that's another thing like a tip uh it 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 helps to make like two or three tiles and thumbnail combos that work well with each other yeah and after starting off with one you know either you know your average channel performance of of that specific type of video mm -hmm. and then you know if it's underperforming you know you may exchange it for a different packaging mm -hmm. there's also a b testing you know where you test them against each other but i'm not too sure about that and how well that works mm -hmm. but the, the video basically started flatlining in impressions and stuff, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. At this point, which is totally normal. Like, I'm not complaining. Yeah. But because it has flatlined for a bit, that's when you can start and uh, exchange the thumbnail or the title to a different version you have and see if that makes an impact. Wow. So the work is never finished once you put it out there. And even if it's a marvelous hit, you still go back and keep an eye on it, see how well it's doing, and then try and revive it keep it alive by changing the title changing the thumbnail that is amazing yeah because um, there might be people that saw your video on the home page with a thumbnail that didn't intrigue them or a title that didn't intrigue them but when you change it maybe those people will will watch as well and then those people will see the video and see that they actually enjoy it but because of the packaging they never clicked on it on it in the first place my mind is blown i'm learning it's like telling me things that I've never thought about how to think about. It's, it's complete mind paradigm shit. It's amazing. Yeah, Thank it's, you it's very a much crazy for world. Knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you've spent a lot of time learning about YouTube and I do believe you when you say you really, really love YouTube and how it works. Yeah. And the behind the scenes of it. Three and a half years ago, the most exciting thing in your life was to wake up at 7am to buy merchandise before the Australians woke up and beat you to it. <laughs> in your own words. <laughs> this is a peculiar thing that you've said in passing in one of the videos. Today, what is the most exciting thing that is happening right now or in the near future that you can get us all hyped about? What are you working on? Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the unfortunate news is maybe to to uh, like big dofus and joys there's just not stuff in the works for that because uh i am working on stuff actively um that's like not dofus related and obviously i know this back then when i made dofus videos that whenever mm -hmm. it wasn't about dofus understandably mm -hmm. people weren't as interested because they might not play that game mm -hmm. um and so i've been working on other stuff because the problem i had back then when i made dofus videos actively is that that like it got a little stale for me at some point like uh -huh. i got a little bored of it yeah and i mean i mentioned that i want to become a youtuber full-time and the sad reality is that that's really hard to do with with making dofus videos and streams and stuff yeah. because in english i mean especially in english just because there's there's not that many people um i mean i would love to just continue making these 100 days videos but obviously i haven't made a single cent with that because the channel isn't even monetized yeah um and it doesn't really pay to make a video for two years anyway um so i'm, <laughs> I'm working on different work. stuff yeah <laughs> there, there is some stuff dofus related that i'm working on but uh i can't speak about it oh. um any it, any sort of hints at what might that be might, what might that be uh yeah i have to be really careful here Okay. It's it's not it's not uh, dofus just in in a way that you would ex expect. Um, it's not gonna be a, a sim app video, you know. It's okay. not gonna be on the sim app channel. Mm. So some of, of some of you guys may may see that or something and think it's cool, but uh, that's not happening quite yet. That's um, I'm planning. Can I just say, if you make anything that is not dofus related? that people can still enjoy and support you with just so you can get some initial traction and we definitely do want to see what other things you're doing in life if you would want to share such a thing please do not hesitate to share stuff with us um, i'll happily personally share it around the discord channels and make posts about it just so people can enjoy your work i'm sure the same quality will be translated and carried over to any other category that you work on so yeah why not oh yeah i hope I hope it turns out even better because uh, I, I I do plan I do plan <laughs> to uh, make more videos long and uh, with with an in depth story because I know that's just what I want to go for. Mm -hmm. um, but when I finished that video before hitting upload, uh, I sat through it one time and watched the whole thing for two hours, obviously to revise it and stuff. Yeah, and I thought it was so bad. 
I was like, oh man, I, I was like, no one's going to watch this. Um, and I have so many things that I would do different already. Like when you work on something that long, you learn so much. So yeah. I, I hope I can make even better stuff. I think that is the curse of the creative. If you've asked Chopin or Mozart about the music and their creation, they'd be like, it's absolutely rubbish. You can change this, you can modify that. I'm not happy with that bit. But every time you yeah. look at anything you've done, you think of it critically more than any normal person would because you know the behind the scenes and what you're capable of in your head. But I'll find that 32,000 people disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> They've all watched it and enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite a perfectionist. Oh, yeah, but I, I think that's obvious. Yeah, yeah, we've gathered that far right on. I think we are on the clock again. Uh, should we take another five minute break and then come back and then do a quick fire mm -hmm. round the staple of this channel so we can get your ideas about what you like, what you dislike about the game to hear some un yeah, sure. some controversial opinions that you may have <laughs> and then give okay. you the floor so you can promote your work and see how people can help you in the future. Shall we do that? Yeah, sure. That sounds good. I didn't have the time to say hello to everyone because I was so taken by the conversation. We have a right, celebrity. So many people already. Yeah, Crazy. I forgot to say that we have a mega celebrity today. I'm so happy to see you, Golden Spirit. You know, he never finds the time because he's so busy in real life at the moment to watch uh -huh. one of these conversations to see how it's like when he was here before. <laughs> oh, third yeah, point I, I, I saw that that you uploaded that conversation with him. Uh, mm. I don't because I I didn't know about him at all because he's speaks portuguese right yeah or yeah. what is it yeah brazilian I haven't seen it. The, oh damn ptb um, it is portuguese <laughs> yeah oh no i know that but i didn't know he was from brazil it's crazy because mm. dofus is pretty big in brazil for some reason right yeah it's crazy. south america south america north of africa as well so I hope that's one of the things I will manage to do by continuing to do this is make a lot more content creators known. And one particularity about mm -hmm. Golden Spirit is despite speaking in Portuguese, which is not a bad thing, I'm saying it like it is a bad thing. He does create his own subtitles and puts them in every one of his videos. So if you find the guide by him that you're interested in, you can always just switch it to English. Oh, oh that's Perfect. sick. That is amazing. Oh, that's really good. Because yeah. I do sometimes when I play Dofus, like when I have time to play Dofus, I uh, do need guides, so <laughs> finding guides sometimes is hard, so it's good to know I got another source. I found that the hard way by doing um, a quest fight with a crow, and anyone doing a quest fight with a crow knows <laughs> that mobs like to stick with you, deal mega damage, and you can't run away to play your yeah. game. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Are we ready to carry on? Do we have any questions from chat? I can't see anything straight. So I think we should just keep cracking with the, the program. All right. Yeah, I did have a couple more interesting questions for me. I don't know how chat will react to this, but... There is a big divide in the world of content creation. There is people who sit down and then channel their creativity into making something that people will enjoy. We call them YouTubers. It's a really, really hard job because there are so many moving parts that you need to get right. The thumbnails, we've heard how Bamis does his thumbnails, how many titles he creates, the intro, the music, how everything ties together to make something that people would want to watch. On the other side, there's streamers, people who do a different kind of preparation and then mm -hmm. press live and use different sets of skills where they have to be entertained in live, they have to engage with chat, they have to do something that will capture your attention, not for 10 minutes, the time of a, a video, but for hours on end. So I've noticed that you've done both. You've given streaming a chance. Can you go back yeah. to that experience and tell us more about it? I found it fascinating, but I want to hear what you have to say about it. Oh man, yeah, streaming is so fun, and it, I mean, it, it has, is great for me in some way because I get to talk too much, I talk so much, <laughs> uh, and I can always talk, and uh, it's something my, my girlfriend is some, only sometimes when she's, you know, had a long day and she's like, you're talking too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why streaming is great for me, actually. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, it was a really good time. My first stream, I remember, was really crazy. Back then, I also made a video about that. I, to say I, the least. <laughs> yeah, I had this whole thing that I was going to do push-ups for, for followers yeah. uh, to incentivize people and stuff and <laughs> see me suffer again because I noticed that works. And the next day, I did so many push-ups, I was so sore, I could not move my upper body anymore. Yeah. It's crazy. 
<laughs> yeah. How, um, tell the chat how many push-ups you've ended up doing. <laughs> I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it was over 200 in that few hours span. <laughs> and then I ended up having to do even more that I couldn't finish because then people donated to make me do more push-ups. <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I noticed that I was trying to do like this regular streaming thing and stuff, but it ended up being a lot of work with the YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. And also I noticed that it takes time to come up with the actual good idea. Yeah, so, you know, you did too much preparation for this stream, for example, yeah. and I didn't really do a lot of that. Um, and yeah, but I love streaming as well. I think it's really cool when people make like, for example, these really high effort videos where you only get to see the creators very seldom because they upload so rarely, but mm -hmm. then you can catch them on live streams every week where you can just hang out with them and know what's going on in their life. Mm -hmm. um, so that's maybe something I'm going to pick up in the future again. I know that if I do go full time or quit my job to do more YouTube, you know, mm -hmm. then I'm probably going to stream again as well. Um, but but I have to. Uh, yeah, I have to get the time first and then yeah. beforehand I need to focus on YouTube. It is outstanding that the remark we've made earlier about how you pick some sort of high stake to make a video, you've just brought that back with you for your first stream. And it worked so well seeing the chat buzz, people donate. I mean, some people gave you $100 twice. Can you tell us, some people are asking about it in the chat, that you're getting paid to work out as opposed to paying to work out. <laughs> Can you give us an idea, if you don't mind, about how much you were paid to do the push-ups that day <laughs> on your first right. stream? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if there were any more donations, but I know that two people donated $100. Wow. Um, to make me do a hundred push-ups because they asked, yo, can we do one dollar per push-up? I was yeah. like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'll do a push-up for a dollar. And so then he, the guy ended up doing just a hundred dollars. And then so I asked this as well. And I was baffled. I mean, I didn't, I noticed that there's like the PayPal fees and stuff. So you don't keep a hundred dollars. But obviously it's still insane that someone would spend that much money on you just like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So the first thing after the stream I, I did was I went downstairs, I still lived at home, and I told my mom, Mom, people just donated $200 on my stream. <laughs> like, I streamed for three hours, people just donated $200. <laughs> that was an absolutely surreal experience, really. <laughs> I honestly think with the quality of work that you put out there and your mastery of the stakes, high stakes, if you were to come back to streaming, you'd put everyone in Dofus out of a job immediately. <laughs> Whenever you're no. streaming, nobody's getting any views, for sure. <laughs> no, the thing with the streaming is really, you have to be on for so long, it really just mm. matters about your personality and there's so many cool people streaming. Yeah. Like, I, like back then, uh, he still, I know he still streams, like Tiss, t time mm. well spent. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh he he does such an awesome job like he did so many so much dream stuff i don't yeah. know what he does currently but like you know PvP. You, you can never beat people at being themselves you know so yeah yeah a hundred percent uh can can we go back about the skill difference differences that require that each one of them requires making youtube videos and making mm -hmm. uh what when you're making youtube videos what are some of the things that you really really enjoy doing and it's your forte and what are things that really rub you off that you just dislike about making videos that every time you don't want to make a video it's because of that and the same thing for streaming just so we can get a second hand um experience of mm -hmm. yours how you live it yeah. How do you think about uh, both of those big, big uh, differences? Yeah. Yeah, obviously they're very different. Um, I gotta say I enjoy both very much. That's obviously why I want to make it my living. I uh, wanted to do make it my living for like 10 years now. Yeah. Um, probably some of, for YouTube and the YouTube videos, whenever there's one step of it, for example, starting to write a script, then the hardest part is always getting started. I hate yeah. that part. Mm -hmm. Like you have an empty page and then you write like w like 10 pages of script and you <laughs> go over that again and stuff, but you have to get started <laughs> or you have to edit and you have like 150 hours of footage or something. Mm. And that's just overwhelming, right? Mm. Um, and, and sometimes you get this paralysis where you have this creative block where you know there's something missing and, and in, in the edit um, and you just don't know what to do about it. Um, but other than that, with video making, I just really love it. With streaming, um, that's more like a second hand thing for me. Like YouTube is always my number one. 
Mm -hmm. um, streaming, I think what, ha what I hate the most about that one is preparation. Heading into a stream is always fun, and that's what I always see when I watch a stream. Uh, but the, the preparation really gets you. And finding good stream ideas, mm -hmm. I find really, really hard. Like yeah. things that work in the streaming format. For mm -hmm. example, some people do this like where they stream, but they stream it in a way so they can also make it a video and stuff. Yeah. Which is like really crazy. Like, mm. I mean, you do that. You make these podcast episodes, which is like you get to make a live stream and a good video, right? It works as both. And I, I haven't really figured it out yet. So, because that's so hard for me. I think that's that's what I found hard for that. And also, streaming takes so much energy. Yes. It's crazy. Mm. Like, when you do that multiple times a, a week, you just, you said you're doing like the third stream in, in a, a row. row now, right uh, now? Yeah. I, I can that tell was, you a thing yeah, or two about insane. that. It's incredibly exhausting. Uh, just to yeah. go back to the thing you said before, because you've researched YouTube a lot, but I've made a few vi videos on YouTube and then immediately jumped to streaming because I feel more natural about that and I hate video editing. As much <laughs> as it is fun the, seeing the end result, but I spend about three days making a five minute video and it's just bad for my mental health. Anyway, when it comes to streaming, take a note of this. There's a gentleman called Ludwig, who is a, an American, but of French oh, yeah. and Swedish origins. That guy, he gave me the idea of thinking about YouTube as a result of whatever you do in your stream. So you have a plan. Today I'm going to do my alignment quest, then I'm going to talk about this topic, then I'm going to do this. And it's video, YouTube videos that you turn into a stream so that you have the raw content and you can just cut it up, add your effects, add your Bamis twist on it, sprinkle it all over and boom, yeah. you've got three videos or four out of it. And you get the extra benefit of having clips, things that you never expected, like little interactions with chat, uh, things that you never expected would happen, like uh, Defy coming up and then telling us about his life and enjoying the game. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the whole pipeline. I mean, when I talked about do, doing streams uh, that turn into videos, I actually was talking about Ludwig as well, yeah. Really? He, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he does a brilliant job yeah, with, yeah. with YouTube and streaming. He's been so consistent mm -hmm. and he has so many ideas. It's crazy, yeah. that guy, yeah. <laughs> I'm seeing single mode wifey pick up my English again. She said, I don't think you mean rub you off, darling. I, you rub you off the wrong way is what I meant to say, but I didn't <laughs> put the other end. <laughs> <laughs> oh and no, we're not about to turn into that kind of stream tonight no, with the water emojis and bikinis. Not tonight, not tonight, wifey. <laughs> that would be on a different platform. <laughs> oh, rub you the wrong way, not even off. Sorry, thank you very much for that procedure. Oh, right, set. I didn't even notice the mistake though. <laughs> well, we're both using our second or third language to converse now. Isn't, yeah. isn't, that, is that, isn't that the case for you as well? Oh yeah, true. I mean, it is second language for me. I don't know how you speak <laughs> anything else than English and your yeah. native language. Uh, but yeah, it, English, cool. huh? Yeah, it is really good. I don't mind speaking English for the rest of my life to the detriment of every other language. I think it's the most uh, expressive language that I've learned so far. People might oh, yeah, think French I, is I romantic and sexy, but I can just bin it immediately if I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the problem with German is everything is so long, the words are so long. And with, even with my girlfriend, we speak English like half of the time, even just privately, because it's just so natural to speak English. And I wow. have all my devices in English, like my Twitch overlay that I'm looking at, mm. uh, like on Twitch, watching here right now on your stream is also in English and stuff. My yeah. phone is in English and everything. That's it? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's how more... it started for me as well, yeah. Yeah, it, I, sp I almost spend more time with English than I spend with German at this point. <laughs> it's crazy. Outstanding. And can I just ask, uh, is German both of your native language, your first language, both you and uh, your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, Swiss German, mm. but uh, yeah, I don't know. We are both quite fluent in English because of the internet and the content we consume. So Hey, if it works, it works. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for giving us that overview about streaming and video making. And I think a lot of people in the chat will benefit from seeing the internal workings from someone who has done well at both. There are completely different things, different skill sets, different ways of thinking, different ways of approaching the execution of the thing. So yeah, thank you very much for telling us what you find difficult and interesting about each one of the two. Yeah. Which brings me to a question. I've no, I know that from myself, 
you make a lot of things, you've watched them over, you can criticize all of them and think they're all shit, but very often you will have a favorite. What is your favorite video, your magnum opus, the one that you're most proud of? I mean, it's gotta be that video that's two hours long. <laughs> it's gotta be the 100 days video. Um, yeah. My second favorite, it isn't anymore, mm. but I made that meme uh, with with Feralt's uh, um, the, the Russian, Russian panda. songs. Yeah, ah, I was I really proud of that one part of the video <laughs> because I am quite the video editing nerd. And there was this part where I edited the Bonta bridge in a way where there was this car with a rocket engine driving <laughs> over it. And I was really proud of how that came about because that was like so hard to make and that took so much time yeah i'm gonna um, link it in the chat i, I wrote it, the question if i tell you the actual question is magnum opus is the drunk russian panda wearing sandals driving lada your favorite video so far because <laughs> i thought that was the <laughs> coolest one the most creative did, one at least <laughs> i did call it my magnum opus on twitter at some point yeah. um but but it is no longer um it is that two hour video because there's just so much in it and there's all because there's the story i think i did a great job with the music and it's one of the first times still that i wrote like a script like that wow. and uh, i'm really proud of the meme edits i did there as well yeah um like the thing with the we exploding and stuff that took a lot of time but i love those par parts of the video i'm really proud of yeah. those um, I'm almost not surprised yeah. because it came at the end of your video making career, let's say, so far. So it is the culmination of everything you've learned throughout. 100%, yeah. Oh, so it's packed with the goodness. <laughs> Orange <Yeah>. juice pulp. <laughs> I think I think I'm at a point with the big videos that I'm making uh, that, that I think uh, probably every new video I make is going to be my new favorite video. And if it's not my new favorite video, then I probably didn't do something right because... Ah. Yeah. Isn't that That's just cool. an excellent way of thinking about how you do things? Yeah, but probably also a good way to put pressure on yourself. But yeah. <laughs> We're too I'll late for that one. Goes. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. What, when you have a lifetime of experience of doing that to yourself, it's too late to discuss that now, <laughs> sadly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I really like your style. There's this one video where uh, you've decided to show face cam for the first time. Uh, if I were to do that for the first time, and it was a topic that I needed to make a video about, I would overthink it, turn it into maybe a five-minute video with a big rise and a climax. What does Bamis do? A six-second video of him, all blurred, <laughs> and then, boop, voila, that's it, all done, see you later. And it racked more views than my best performing video so far. <laughs> Well, to be fair, that, that video has been on YouTube for a long time, so it's had time to get views. <laughs> Three years. True, 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 true. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you about sort of, just, just in a few, you don't need to get into too many details, but too much details, but what is your process for making a video? How do you decide whether something is going to be 10 seconds or two hours long? Do you have that preconceived in the beginning and then you enact it or is it you find it as you go? What's your process? I saw one video with, with, uh, with your wife. Yeah. I found it very funny. I I loved I love the way she she's interacting with the office stuff and making fun of <laughs> all the stupidity of it. Which that was I the understand. entire idea of bringing her in it. Because every yeah. time I talk about the game, she looks at me with that eye of like, "Are you serious? Are you hearing yourself?" <laughs> <laughs> Great content. <laughs> and I have an yeah. anecdote. Uh, when I started playing the game, I started doing my emerald quest as everyone, and then you get to the point where you have to do some breeding. And then one of my best friends at the time who was playing, he stopped playing sadly. Uh, we used to help each other and we got into breathing because we were doing emerald at the same time and we'd hop on voice chat and talk about dragger turkeys how to breed them so i went ahead and did all the research and then i came back and i'm explaining to him like with a whiteboard this is what we need to do to raise this stats and <laughs> going all conspiracy crazy about it and then single oh wife he just walks by silently at the time where i'm telling him you need to slap it so that it's fertile and then so it delivers more babies <laughs> just walks in like this is the man I've married. <laughs> the the regular Turkish breeding is so questionable. I did poke fun at, at that in my video as well. I, I didn't go in depth there on purpose. But but yeah. the whole forcing your dragon turkey to be an adult and making it want to have a child and stuff is absolutely yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just waiting to get cancelled. It's one of those things. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> 
Ay, 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 ay. Well, or, yeah, so we have a music recommendation. Right. This is, I think this is one of my favorite segments of every conversation with any creator. It's the quick fire round and I feel like you're gonna do well at it because you think quickly on the spot, you're good at improv, but I will test you, I will ask you questions and I want the first thing that comes to your mind. Don't overthink it, just the okay. first thing that comes to your mind and then we can have a laugh about it, we, the chat can roast you for your choices. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let's start with one that will require a bit of thought, but still, throw the first thing that comes to mind. What is your most controversial opinion about the game, or any of its aspects? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, man, controversial. Something you want to bring uh, back, something that if you said it, the pitchforks would be out. <laughs> like, how okay. dare you? Yeah. Um, so, like... To some degree, mm -hmm. I miss the time when the Enotroph made like summoned a chest that made more loot. Oh, it's that stupid. is a cool. Yeah. It, it's stupid because like obviously <laughs> it just makes one class OP at dropping loot. Yeah. But it was it was a really I think it's just a really cool mechanic. Mm. Um, and it's probably one of the only reasons I would play Dofus Retro for because I think that's still a thing there. I'm yeah, sure. you still have that one extra line at the end, then you see what the the chest dropped. That, yeah. that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm gonna this this has become a staple ever since I've spoken to Andre Golden Spirit here in the podcast. But you are an intern at Ankama tomorrow. They watch this interview. They like you so much. They offer you a job. You're there on your first day. You can trip and accidentally delete one class. Which one is it? <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, I heard I have a heard you ask that before, um, but I didn't think about it that much. The thing is, with with me not doing PvP, I don't really hate classes as much. Uh huh. Um, damn. You know what? I have that's not thought through at all, as you don't want me to. Yeah. Um, First thing, I find it boring that Enripsa is the most generic best healing class or something. I want more interesting healing classes, so I yep. don't want I, I don't want in ripses. <laughs> I want people to do other things for healing. Like in my my hundred days video, I used an Osa for healing instead, uh -huh. and not optimal. But I don't, I want you know I want more uh, versatility or other one. That's actually a uh, com controversial one. controversial right <laughs> yeah. controversial take as well. Yeah. I would remove Pandavas because it's so boring that they need to be on every PVM team. <laughs> Oh no, yeah, Seth, Seth blood is going to unsubscribe from your channel because he mains any and he loves it so much for healing, for damage, he thinks it's complete. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Yeah, tomorrow you start a new adventure in a mono server account, you can create one account, one character, which one are you picking? That's actually one that I already thought of to answer when you asked it Let's to someone go. else because I was yeah. like, ah, oh, damn, what would I do? Um, I think I would do Osa because um, you can have multiple classes uh -huh. at the same time, but you can have different sets for different elements. So mm. I'm, I'm also thinking about where can I get a lot of versatility with changing my element. So I would go Osa wow. because I can have the ranged tofu, uh -huh. I can have... Uh, the supportive healing uh, wormlings, yeah. uh, the the funny the, the funny chance frogs, frogs are just <laughs> cute, <laughs> and the tanky and the tanky <laughs> gobble. So I think it's one of the most versatile classes. Yeah. Plus, it's really good for soloing because of the summons. Yeah, the chat is vibing so much with your answer, and I think Sevi is going to change glasses back from Sram to Oz again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say any to to please anyone, so yeah, it's okay it for me that they hated that answer. Yeah, and he did say it was going to be controversial, so here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, you have, have you, just before I ask you the next one, um, you did you did say, are you mostly PVM or are you mostly PvP? Because your channel doesn't give a straight answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the most, I'm not a pro at any of them, which mm -hmm. which sucks to answer it, but uh, oh, I'm always more I. interested in PVM. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair. Yeah. I'm always more interested in PVM. Okay. Uh, recently, I've also been more interested in the quests and actually reading the dialogues, which oh, is pretty cool. Oh, the lore! Yeah. Let's go! So would you say you've done a lot of PVM content, just so I can uh, sort of frame my questions? Like, have you done endgame dungeons, or did you reach a certain... <sighs> uh, 
Rarely. Uh, on Osotopi was the first time where I got to like level 150 plus dungeons and did all of those because mm -hmm. of all the tokens to get and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, probably more PVM than PvP, but but a little bit of PvP with my level 200 Masquerader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you say that is your favorite class, by the way? No, not at all. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, I'm actually playing a little, I had been playing a little more Dorfus recently and mm -hmm. have a team and stuff. Uh, and I'm almost thinking about changing the class of the Masquerader because my favorite class is Kra. Whoa, it was the first go. character, it was the first character I created. <laughs> and it's just, I, I like Kra so much. You can yeah. play on range, which is my favorite part, uh, pl way to play. Yeah. And um, I really like. Uh, 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 that you don't have to think so much, and I really like playing like multi, and I love explosive arrow as a spell. Oh. I just really like cross spells as well, you know. Oh, you, you love exploding yeah. stuff from afar. <laughs> I got oh, yeah. <laughs> I got that from your Minecraft videos. Let's blow shit up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, just in the spirit of everything that you've told us just now, what has been the hardest quest that you've done so far that you've disliked? Difficult, difficult, difficult. Mm. Well, uh, again, I didn't get that far yet, sadly, but I, I always want to. But again, I, on long projects or things, I lose interest and then I play different games again and don't come back to uh, to Dofus again. So I never get there in the end and I always start a new team or something. <laughs> um, the hardest one... I'm almost thinking if it's got to be like Volgard Spirit or something because oh. I just haven't done like Volbis or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably that because I've never gotten to like the harder, the harder quest lines. <laughs> Chat. He's saying this is the most difficult quest he's done so far, and he is the holder of the fastest, the world record of the fastest person to do Volgrot. Granted, some tricks <laughs> were involved in the making of, but he's still number one. <laughs> Hell yeah. It, it was actually really good. To, like, I, when I did Volgrot Spirit, it took me so long. I've done yeah. it a couple of times, and after that whole challenge thing where I did it so often, I can just beat it like first try in like 1 minute 40 or something like that. I don't remember what my actual <laughs> real time was. Yeah. yeah, it was not the world record, but it has magically turned into it. <laughs> oh yeah, with a little bit of <laughs> editing magic. <laughs> a little bit of faint magic. I've linked to it in the chat if anyone hasn't seen it. You can skip <laughs> all the way to the end and see how Bamis has broken the world record in the most yeah. magical of ways. In the most Bamis way, I'd like to say. <laughs> yeah, I also, by uh, the way, mm. talking about thumbnails, I really, oddly, I really like the thumbnail on, on that video. Yeah. It is spectacular. That's one thing I can't really fault you for. You do put a lot of attention into your titles, uh, thumbnails, and we now know the behind the scenes. We've seen how long you take to create one and how many tries. And that you yeah. don't even stop even after it's a success. You never stop. You still change things to keep them interesting and alive for others to enjoy. Thank you very much for that answer. I love answers that spiral and then bring other things <laughs> into the... <laughs> For the sure. dungeon or boss mechanic that you just cannot understand so far. You've tried it, it breaks your head. My Count Harburg, which one is it for you? <laughs> okay, so there is a lot of dungeons that I haven't done yet. Uh -huh. um, I would say the dungeons that I have done, mm -hmm. I do understand pretty well. Okay. Like, some of the hard ones have been like the, the dimension, du dimension dungeons, like the whole Celorium uh, dimension mm -hmm. with the clock spinning around and stuff. Yeah. Oof, I could probably come up with a really good answer if I had time to think about it, but that's quick, not the quick, point. Quick. The dungeon you've hated so far, that, let's say that took you the longest to understand, given that you understand all of the ones you've done now. Okay, um... Quick, shit. quick, 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 quick! You've gotta have okay. hated one of them. <laughs> okay, um, what's the one called? Uh, Sylph the Greater Burp, probably. That um, one? Oh, Burp, yeah! The it has one. Because <laughs> it has so many things you have to look at and the spells and the effects. Yeah. So that's probably the longest one, one of the Onomai ones, because they always have these stupid mechanics where you have to make them vulnerable <laughs> first, which I just hate. Um, yeah, so that one was a, always a pain for me. And whenever I come back to it, I have to like read the wiki like three times until I get wow. it again. Wow, wow, wow. That, honestly, this question continues to deliver because you see, uh, 
like for me, that was one of the easiest dungeons. But for you, it seems to be difficult. And then I'll speak to Andre, Golden Spirit, and he'll say, "No, Count Hardwick is so easy." And I'm like, "No, it doesn't work. What is it? It's the devil. Delete it." <laughs> and then you see that everyone is good at something and dislikes something. It's oh massive, God. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> the variety of it continues to baffle me. What is the yeah. one dungeon that you thought was just a work of genius? Nothing to change about. Just perfect. Hmm. Okay, there's probably a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not Dramax. Dramax is a well-executed dungeon with how much work they put into it and the uh, the whole cutscene and stuff. But I think it's stupid because it makes no sense for the level, right? <laughs> well, um, <yeah. laughs> I mean, I got a lot. Before. I got a lot of thoughts on on, on the Puppet Master. <laughs> yeah, 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 go on. Um, <laughs> but a news. very well-designed dungeon, I would say, is for level 102. Mm. It's just a very crisp, nice experience. I would say Moon Dungeon. It's Ooh. a nice challenge for the level. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a mechanic that you uh, have to make work with the totems. Yeah. I think thematically it's really nice. Mm -hmm. You got these totems and these uh, glyphs in the, the same colors. It's really easy to understand, but yeah. you have to do some thinking in the in the fight to yeah. make it work. Um, but it never gets so frustrating that you would hate it as a level 100 dungeon, because I think you can do it on the first try most of the time when you get to it, <laughs> but but it feels like a nice challenge. So I really like Moon Dungeon. Yeah, that, that is a brilliant answer. Is is it level one hundred? Yeah. I think they've introduced mechanics in the games in general. The boss mechanics at level one hundred. That's when you start having to think about mm -hmm. how to be a boss. And I think mm -hmm. that is one of the gateway drugs that were done nicely to introduce the concept without it being oppressively difficult. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go to Dramax Theater and then you're like, delete. <laughs> yeah. That that the stats of them make just no sense like the... yeah. Ugh, yeah. That's too much trauma. I can't get into it. <laughs> Anyone who's ever done it in dreams knows the struggle. If you scale their HP, man, oh my god, become incredibly difficult. I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you played any retro before? Did you? Because you've started it in 2012. Or was oh. all your experience 2.0? Yeah, all my all my experience was 2.0. Right. I've only seen some videos, but uh, when I tried playing Dofus Retro for like an hour, I noticed the game has so many quality of life things missing from it and so yeah. many things were improved over the time yeah. like <laughs> being able to fail crafts come on or you know having to wait till all your bread is crafted and stuff like that one by one and, and the leveling goes so s slowly like yeah i'm just uh yeah i feel like you need to have the nostalgia of that to really mm -hmm. enjoy it yeah, so uh, is it is it fair to say that you have absolutely no nostalgia with anything before 2.0? When you see it, when you play it, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, only only the old Astrid music I really mm, like. That is incredible because a lot of people who are in the chat today and that I've spoken to before, everything that you describe as uh, lack of quality of life, the lack of fluidity and smoothness is what we think of as nostalgia. All these difficult nonsense that we had to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's like, that was great. No, it wasn't. It was just difficult. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got absolutely no nostalgia. I'm just too young. When I picked up on it, I was already a young child, but yeah. uh, I, I missed that part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just keep it to 2.0. I want to get a sense of your taste of fashion and the beauty. What do you think is the best designed items? Let's go with three. Mm -hmm. Beautiful yeah, item. I, I know Inky Vale and Solomon are very popular here already. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I heard that one before. So I was, I was already thinking, can I think of anything that's um, a bit outside the things that people say? Mm -hmm. I think there's this little line of... of almost a storyline going through the levels where you start off with the Dora, then you got the Dora Bora and the Dora yeah. Black, right? And yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 and yeah, it yeah. ends up all the way at the Dora Abyss, the, the yes, golden one. The, yeah, yellow one. <laughs> I think based off all of that, I mean, Dora Bora and Dora Black are like classics, but yeah. I really like the Dora Abyss um, uh -huh. because it's like the culmination of all those, all those levels and stuff. I think yeah. it's a very cleanly designed item. Wow. Um, is it, by the way, is that your Pokemon sense of gameplay, the evolution from one to the other? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, yeah. I like yeah. that there's more to it and it, it's just, 
the door and stuff is always stuff I really found cool. Yeah. And another one I probably really like, um, I like the level 140 sets, the iconic ones, like Soft Oak set and Moo Wolf set. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would also say one of the cooler items in the game is um, the Moo Wolf hat. So, it's, which is just like the, you know, the, the purple hat. looking one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking of, if, if I can think of a more different one, but one I definitely like as well is the, um, what's it called? The Soft Oak Hat, which... Yeah, big classic. When I was young, my friend was like a level 140 Intelligence Osa. And mm -hmm. that was before I was able to play. I wasn't al allowed yet. I was too young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and so I always came over to his place to watch him play. And he had a soft oak set. So I always found that really cool. Um, <laughs> it's a classic look. Even uh, Rambo PL, the first level 200, had that on. So it brings a lot of memory with it. It's right. an iconic look. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and other than that, I think a lot of the shields are really cool. Mm, um, that's not, That's something we've never heard before, you know. Yeah, but, but shields are really cool. Like, there's cool cosmetic shields. Mm -hmm. But I think just... I, I Maybe I go with... Well, you gotta love this answer, but I like the four leaf a lot. So you <gasps> probably God. love the four leaf so much <laughs> that you didn't even want to put a cosmetic on it, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> but I was made to. I was forced to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that video. <laughs> no, I, I think, the for, for example, like, for me as someone that really likes Craw, right? I just yeah. think not only is the four leaf like the quintessential end game shield for yeah. uh, uh, a craw pretty much when you want to go crit, but also thematically it just fits it so well. It looks really cool. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of answers in the chat and I've never been asked this question because I'm usually the one answering it. But if I were to, oh my God, I would go crazy on shields. Elizael shield. Right? Have you ever, have you, has, um, has anyone ever looked and zoomed at Elizael wearing her own shield? I mean, that yeah. is the coolest look that one I've ever seen. so great. Yeah, yeah the color scheme. Four yeah. Leaf, Captain and Machna is a classic. That's it brings iconic. back Marvel memories yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Man, there's so many good shields. I mean, yeah. the, and the other items, I mean, they they don't get a lot of attention because you mm. don't see them outside of your inventory, like belts and boots and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, Which is kind of sad. And then, and then, quick honorable mention, I like the... the Pandala Island sets, the Terdala, the Aerdala, Oidala, oh, and yes. Akodala sets. Yeah. They just look really cool. Like when you're in the beginning of the game and you're rocking those sets, <sighs> you, you just look show stylish. It off. Yeah. yeah. You show it off. <laughs> That's yeah. when you feel like, you know, you put on items and they're just cosmetic. Like it matters more what the stats are. But when you're like level 50 <laughs> chance and you put on a, a Aquadala set, you're like, oh, cool, I'm getting somewhere. Hey boy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time where that was, like, if you played 129 before the new introduction of new sets and new level 200 items, that's why Rambo PL was rocking a level 140 hat. Because those dungeons used to be the end game. Moo Wolf, uh, um, uh, Soft Oak, Kralov, yeah. stuff like that. So you could tell how far ahead someone is in their progression by what items they were wearing before cosmetics. Mm -hmm. So if it was soft oak, stuff like that, you knew they were advanced, you respected them, you were terrified right. of them. If yeah. they were wearing aqua, like it was a, a denominator, like you could see their progression mm -hmm. through what they were. And aqua dala, terdala were another ones for level 60, 70, up to 100. Yeah. Fabulous, yeah. yeah, yeah. The chat are vi the chat is vibing with the sets you've mentioned. Hell Wolf yeah. Is getting Love acclaim. It. <laughs> Soft oak yeah. aquadala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah, viewers absolutely. got great taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the other thing I wanted to get your opinion on, this is a new recent thing, the sidekicks. Do you have any favorites? And there are only two right answers. <laughs> <laughs> I I have never were there changes recently to them? Because I didn't notice any of that. Yeah. Um, there used to be oh. a handful of them, and now there are like pets, they're companions that you can equip. So there's like 80 or God knows how many of them. We haven't finished exploring all oh of them. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, I had no idea. Um, I just, because I used it the most, I just love the Astrum Knight. Cause yes, let's go. That's like, one of the two right answers. Yeah, because <laughs> sidekicks are for PVM, right? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and PVM is mostly not about, like most times you do fights in PVM, it's not about 
healing or tactics or damage mm -hmm. interception or all that stuff. Yeah. It's about finishing fights quick. Yeah. And Astro Knight is full offensive. OP. Deals damage in all elements. Yes. It's perfect. When I used to soul <laughs> Coriander Dungeon, yeah. um, for a living, literally, I made camas just by souling Coriander Dungeon with my Omni level 200 Craw. Wow. Um, I, I used to Astro Knight a lot there as well to like tank and stuff. And gotcha. While you soul. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Astro Knight. And the other one that used to be given for free at some point in your progression was the Lumino, which was for the <laughs> heals. And yeah, which those is on, great. Even after the rework, those two still are at the top of everyone's list. They're just so amazing. <laughs> I need to check out that rework. I, I love that Dofus, like Ankama, actually still updates so much. Yeah. And obviously with Unity as well, I'm really hyped. I hope, I hope like the player base gets to expand a little more again through that. Go on, give us all your thoughts about Unity. Have you seen what they've announced yesterday? Oh, yeah, uh, 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 some parts of it. I mean, most I've seen is just a lot of the maps, right? Being animated and stuff. And the, mm -hmm. the, you talked about the music as well, which I couldn't hear in your video, but I don't know if that was my issue. I've re-uploaded um, just those bits so people can get the full effect. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, spell animations i think you just need to get adjusted to the change that's just how it is after that many years right mm -hmm. but obviously when it looks really awesome and there's awesome sound effects like using a spell and it looking epic is always a great feeling oh, yeah. but the maps i did not realize how <laughs> yeah. much difference the new animated maps would make because mm -hmm. like everything compared like to this the stale images the the just the small things the water moving the snowflakes and free ghost everything feels so alive and you i start caring about the entire world so much more immediately like you saw the celorium right yeah um and you see this this blue tree thing that like flashes in and out or something yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. i never even noticed that before you know yeah. and now yeah. i saw that and, and i'm like okay i want to know more about this world and the fucking the, the, the <laughs> flora and fauna like why is there a tree there right yeah and and i think that it adds so much to the game and i understand the technical limitations that they were there before yeah, but flash. the game should have never been there before without those things like i need yeah. that so badly i'm so excited for that i think you've said you've mentioned earlier how you're reading the text now you're engaging with the lore and the story mm -hmm. those things can only enhance your experience of 100%. the full uh, they call the immersive world and i honestly yeah. was blown away by it i don't yeah. play with sound i turn off everything i don't want any sound I play my own music right but now after listening to pandala and tying it back to what golden spirit said that he likes the sound of an area i was like what yeah you guys play with sound <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I've been experimenting with turning it on sometimes as well. Like I have oh, yeah. the, the sounds on sometimes uh -huh. now, but usually the music is off because I'm watching something or listening to music on yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah. But it it can feel so nice to feel immersed. And once <laughs> Unity is here, 100%, I'm going to play with music. Oh, and then I'm going to do go. the quests. I'm going to be in Pandala. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm in Asia right now. You know, I'm going to feel <laughs> everything. And it's going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to get quickly your thoughts on um, this is something I've posed to Essex during our last conversation Which was will you start again when the new servers that were announced yesterday come out in unity or are you opposed? Oh. You, you still want to hold on to all the progression you have all the exos that you've landed and all your wealth Okay, so I actually haven't been up to date with that part yet mm -hmm. um, So they're not so they're gonna make new servers Yes. Is it going to be like international too? Um, we don't have any more details then. There will be multi-account okay. servers and mono-account servers. So people will get okay. to restart scratch without the effects right. of idols and all the crazy stuff mm. that happened in the past. Where do you position yourself there? Take your time if you want to think through it. Yeah, I mean, I just, for example, created some new characters because I was like, I'm sick of being solo uh, mm -hmm. on Talkasha. It would be cool to have like four characters. Mm -hmm. So I used my level 200 potion from Temporis, for example, okay. to create oh. a character that I did call Simap <laughs> in honor <laughs> of, of that channel. Um, nice. um, but also, it would be really cool to restart at, with everyone. Yeah. You know, you don't need to stay there forever either. But I think it's a, like a really cool moment to be part of because it's like a big, big moment for Dofus. Yeah. And also, Mega it's shift. cool that 
even those people that already did everything and know about dreams and stuff, which I don't really understand yet. Yeah. Like whatever, wherever they are at, we'll all have to start at square one. Yes. Like, yeah. Everyone will get ahead of me immediately because I don't know, but people that play MMORPGs just play way too much for some reason. I don't know how they have all that time. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's it's really cool to start off with everyone at square one. But, so mm. I can imagine myself doing that as well and like joining a guild with some people that I may know or something and mm. helping each other out on the entire adventure. It's a bit of that feeling you get with Temporis as well, where everyone is in the same boat and stuff and you do all yeah. that together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've got loads. I've asked this question to pretty much everyone I've conversed with. Ha Hello, how are you doing? Well, so when Unity rolls out, <laughs> it was so yeah. boring pestering people with this because I'm really interested in how people foresee things before they happen. And I can summarize it in literally two sentences. There's a bunch of people who are ready to tr start from scratch. These are people who haven't progressed that much. So they're happy to do just that much effort again and then be back to where they started but the vast yeah. majority uh, and it is what pingy is saying here nala said this in the beginning but there is no incentive with temporis you're doing new content you're engaging with something exciting new different you can do that for two months but if it is just restarting for the sake of restarting then no thank you i'll go back and just continue with my level 200 dungeons i don't want to butt head with the <laughs> royal gobble <laughs> i totally understand yeah but mm. you know that uh and kama isn't just adding servers because they want all the people from the other servers to go on this new server it's ah. because there will be an increase in players because mm. of this big thing and they know i mean obviously they're gonna do more marketing they're gonna put up ads and stuff right yeah. and uh there's probably really hope hopefully so. gonna be a lot of new players there as well yeah. um i do i actually do know from some sources that Ankama is planning more about about the international stuff and and the unity stuff as well, Ooh. right? Because obviously Dino is a big thing as well. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's because of that. And maybe some people that are on Talkasha settled in, you know, are gonna try it, and then maybe just after some time go back to Talkasha. Yeah, just fine. But I'm also down to play on a new server with hopefully some new people, you know? And yeah. And you can show them the ropes and hopefully yeah. help them. Because this game is really hard to learn and start off with, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. I just think a new server like that, if it's actually hype, it just creates so much excitement. So Yeah. Thank you very much for that take. There were a lot of elements there that I've never heard before. And that has expanded my view of things. Um... Uh, which makes me think, has Ankama ever contacted you for any sort of partnership or anything like that? I mean, you are the largest English content creator with 10,000 followers, subscribers on one oh, channel on YouTube. And I then starting it. another one and then cruising past pretty much everyone in the span of three <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, first thing, the ah. Bahamas channel where I made videos, those views are inflated. I think it's because of a... Yeah, it's private, so you couldn't know because I made like these two viral memes. Yeah. Uh, that got over a million views, and those gave me like like eight thousand subscribers or something. So mm. I uh, actually, when I made those videos, was only at like two thousand. So I think subscriber-wise, the biggest creator would be Benjamin because his Dofus channel has seven thousand subscribers. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously that English video I made was pretty big. Um, I did worked with Ankama before, you know, with like the giveaways. I gave a, I got like a YouTube cape. Wow. I was able to give away a YouTube capes in the, uh -huh. in the videos mm -hmm. um, and do like giveaways on my Discord and on Twitter. Um, and I'm not quite sure how it works with like being forced to not be able to say stuff. But Ankama did reach out to me after my English, my my uh, two, 100 days video, yeah. Nice, okay. So, hey, this is a new preview in the channel. This is, the world is hearing this for the first time. Is there a possible partnership in the works then? Are you going to go back to some sort of giveaways and being like an official Ankama partner? Like Aslix and Mr. Black? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, since I'm not really... I'm not working on a new Dofus video right now, gotcha, you know, from, gotcha, yeah. from my SimUp channel. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> okay, listen, man, I'm, I'm going to be open with you. I, I, I hope that's not wrong to say, but like I had to sign an NDA 
And okay. I don't know how they work exactly, so I'm not a lot sure you what I'm allowed to say. You only say what you're comfortable or, or want to say. <laughs> Literally. Don't, yeah. don't put yourself in any difficulties or anything for the for sake sure. of this conversation. But say whatever um, you need or you can say. But there could be some things happening with Ankama fabulous, for Fabulous, fabulous. Let's leave it at that. There is plenty of hype and excitement already. A yeah. preview, something that nobody had heard before until today. Let's go. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. We've he done could the... tell you, but then he'd have to kill you, Malt. That's exactly <laughs> it. I don't want to have to do that to you. No, thank you very much. I've got a little girl that needs the dad. <laughs> cool, I think we are reaching the natural conclusion, and we've already beaten my record so far for a conversation with any creator. <laughs> I don't know where you get the energy, man. You are fabulous and amazing. Thank you very much for that. Um, I wanted to say one last thing before we got to the promo bit. The part where you have the floor and you tell everyone how to help and best support you. Yeah, so on your leak in my subscriber video. Obviously, when you started making videos the very first time, you were hiding your subscriber count. Mm -hmm. Because according to you, in your own words, you felt like that did not reflect, it would hold you back. It does not, the subscriber count does not reflect the quality of your work. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the top comments that really struck me is, it, it isn't one comment, it's a type of comment that surfaced a lot in your videos is, how do you not have millions of views? Whether it be Minecraft, which has a big following, Dofus, yeah. I can understand that, but with Minecraft and GTA, I don't understand why you don't have that many views, given your understanding of YouTube game, the algorithm, the effort that you've put in. What, to what do you attribute the fact that you've not reached that level? Is there any barrier that you can see? And if so, is there anything that needs to be done to go above it? What is? What are your thoughts on this? Oh yeah, uh, 100%. Well, I did. I knew way less back then when I made those those, uh, those Minecraft and GTA videos. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, when you have a channel based on one game and you have an existing audience, you upload something else and your existing audience isn't going to care too much. Obviously, as you see, just automatically by the views and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and YouTube takes basically all their signal from viewer data. So when your existing audience doesn't like the video, it's mm. already the, the likelihood of the video reaching a lot of people is way lower. YouTube knows your audience from who usually watches your videos mm -hmm. and then it doesn't really know who they're, they're supposed to show it to um, ah. when those people don't like it. I um, gotcha. That's why some people, when they transition uh, niches or something, they ask themselves the question, should I make a new channel? Because mm. uh, that's also why I made a channel where I can upload Dofus. And that's <laughs> why I put my two hour video on, yeah. on Simap and not on Bamus because I know gotcha. I want to upload a different game on Bamus. Gotcha, and, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Yeah, that, mm. that just messes up the data. Also, like you need to have ideas that are good for, for new viewers, for like people will come in at the start that don't care about you. They don't know you. If you uh, sit there and talk about how great you are or whatever, then they're not going to care. So, yeah. um, if I make a video about Minecraft Hardcore that doesn't stand out, if anyone else is already doing that with an existing following, um, they're not gonna come watch my video if someone else if they're already watching someone else. I need to do yeah. it better, and I didn't do that back then. But gotcha. that's something I'm I'm doing right now. I'm working on. Yeah, right. Which brings us, oh, this is amazing. I still, I still feel like I can go ahead, but I know that I'm sick from having streamed three days and having had to look at a little one and I'm a oh, bit yeah. under the weather because there's a cold that's going around at the moment. So I don't want to push it too much. So I'll bring it to its natural conclusion, but that's not to say that I haven't enjoyed it. I could honestly keep going for hours. I've enjoyed it so much. Thank you very much for being amazing, Bamis. Thank you very much for being here, for accepting to speak with me, to be here with the lovely English community and international that we are sort of building from the ashes. I want you, as a minimum gift from me to you, I want you to take the time to tell people that are watching now and in the future what your work is, where is it, and especially, and I emphasize this, how can they best support you? If that is sending you money directly through PayPal, say it. If that is liking videos or sending you comments, please do say how you want to best be supported by people watching this. The floor is yours. Okay, yeah. Um, well, obviously, I gotta say real quick, thank you so much for having me on as well. I have no idea how it's been three hours. That was, like, really quick. Obviously, 
being given the platform to talk about all the stuff and being able to talk about the process with this whole video and stuff is super cool for me. Um, <laughs> and, Someone saying you need to be protected from a couple yeah, of lawyers. Do we I have any lawyers in the chat? Well. <laughs> yeah, it's really fucking good. Um, so the, the thing with supporting me is, um, you know the thing with Swiss people, uh, the stereotype about having money? Um, no, but I, I have enough money, you know. Uh, I, I'm doing like a community service I have to do as a replacement for military and stuff. So I have a job I have to do there anyway. Um, where you'll be able to find me is uh, not really on Twitch or Twitter, honestly, only like on YouTube. Um, there's not really going to be stuff on Simap. Uh, I'm going to be honest, when I started making that 100 days video, I was like, it's pro maybe the last Dofus video I'm going to make. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a sequel or something like that at any point. Um, but there's going to, what I'm working on is going to be on the Bama's channel. It's only going to be for people who want to see it. So like no one has to watch it if you don't feel like it. Uh, but there's nothing that's going to be there very near in the future because I'm very busy. Um, but the best way to support me is honestly at this point just to support the English Dofus community because I, I love Dofus so much and I love the English Dofus community so much and everyone who takes their time to make the content. So continue supporting Single Malt, you know, and Essex and everyone. Um, and subscribe to him. Uh, and... You know, I I want to see everyone keeping on improving that makes these videos. And um, yeah, that's just not much you guys can do for me right now. So so do something for everyone else that makes cool English stuff videos. Uh, I've linked your social uh, media content channel. You've said that you will be posting more on. And if anybody wants to go and follow it now, there will be more content if you want to keep a keen eye on what Bamis is doing in the future. We appreciate you very much, Best Invite. I've had a blast. I could, as I said, I could keep going Same here. for hours and hours, but I will do in the spirit of retaining some sort of a health so I can continue doing more of this yeah. in the future. So yeah, thank you very much for Best Invite. We've appreciated having you over. And don't be a stranger. If you ever think of making anything, any collabs or anything to do with Dofus, hit me up anytime. I'm here. And the people who are watching this also know how to contact you via Discord or your YouTube channel. 100%. With that said, yeah. thank you very much for passing by. I appreciate it. And say thank you very much for Girlfriend. She supported you well today. And we've enjoyed the little touch in the chat, oh, yeah. the soft touch in the chat. <laughs> and good Shout luck with the girlfriend. future, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right.